Hello everyone, welcome to Random Encounter 285 or 285. This is the end of 2023. Uh, it's been a remarkable, remarkable year for games. Uh, your mileage may vary elsewhere, but in the video game, in, in, like for games coming out, actually even your mileage may vary even in the game industry. But for the, what we got to play this year, it was crazy good. It was so amazing. Uh, we actually did an episode of Retro Encounter, on that very topic, uh, which I think is coming out on Thursday. So pay attention for that. Uh, but in the meantime, we're doing the kind of the, the sister show of the looking back at 2023. And today we're going to be looking forward to 2024. Uh, we do this every single year. It's one of our favorite episodes because, I mean, we get to talk about what's coming up, uh, what really excites us. And it kind of pairs with our uh, most anticipated games of 2024 feature, uh, which the entire site contributes to. Everyone uh, comes in and they pick games and they write a little blurb about, you know, why they're excited about this game. What What is this game? Uh, it's 30 games this year, so it's a pretty big list, and we're going to be trying to get through all of it. And plus, here and there, we might mention a few games that are coming out that uh, that aren't on this list because they may or may not be RPGs or adventure games. Who knows? Uh, but today, joining me on the show is the Features Manager and uh, just a genuinely great guy, Zach. Hello. I don't know about the last part, but I am the first part. Yep. And uh, we have another great guy here, Josh. Hey. And the best guy, Hillary. Yeah. Uh, I'm a forward-thinking individual, and I'm excited to talk about our roster of games. <laughs> how am I going to How am I going to top that one? Yeah. Anyway, I'm Mike. I'm here too. Mike. Yeah, you're here. Uh, yeah. No, Mike. You are. The, I'll tell you what. Mike is. Mike is <laughs> the guy. Mike is the just, guy because the, the, guy. He, the amount of work that Mike has done this year for RPG Fan is crazy. And we're actually going to be talking a little bit about that at the very end of the episode because there has been a big project that's gotten released for RPG Fan that we're ridiculously excited about. Um, but you want to know what? We're not really going to you know talk about anything else or have a preamble or anything. We have too damn much to get through. So why don't we just dive straight in? So this is the 30 most anticipated games of 2024 uh, for RPGs and adventure games and visual novels and things like that. Uh, and we're going to be starting it up with, I think it's in alphabetical order. I Will it be in alphabetical order when it gets posted? I think so. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So let's start up with uh, another code recollection. So interesting thing about another code recollection is it's actually, uh, it's a remake of one game that we got and one game that we didn't. So it's a remake of Trace Memory and another code R, A Journey into Lost Memories. Now, uh, these were D these were DS games. We only got one of them. It was uh, a fairly early DS game, I think, and it was a great adventure game. Uh, but since then, it's really kind of been in limbo. We haven't heard anything about this series, and unexpectedly, we are getting remakes of both games. So that's pretty cool. Uh, Geo wrote the write-up, and Geo was super excited about it. Is anyone else excited about another code recollection? Absolutely. Trace Memory is one of my favorite DS games. Uh, Ooh. I replay it pretty pretty often. I played through it last year, convinced a friend to play it this year, uh, had some friends buy me the sequel, and then they announced this remake like a week later. <laughs> 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 so I mean, yeah, I'm, I was one of the five people that was just blown away when they announced this. <laughs> what is going on? I, I was with you, although I haven't played it. I, I own it. I have the DS one and I guess it, at least visually and like the, con the concept left an impression on me because like, or maybe I just have a good memory about certain game things because when, when that came up on the direct, I was like, this is trace memory. I don't know why. I don't know why it's something I recognize having never played it, but I was really excited. So I think this is finally the time to play, for me to play the game. I have it in the sense that it was on my, it's horrible to admit, it was on my R4 flashcard for a long time and I never ended up playing it, which I feel bad about. Not just because I, you know, had it on the flashcard, but also because it's, you know, it's a, apparently a fantastic visual novel adventure game and I just kind of missed it. You feel bad that you didn't play an illegal copy of it is what you're saying. I suppose when you put it like that, I'm a, I'm actually a hero. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This the, the game looks really really cool, um, and it's one of the neatest things I find about these remakes. And we've been getting a lot of remakes and uh, collections, like well, you know, obviously Collection of Mana, for example. Um, is you get a lot of bang for your buck out of these things because they're compilations of games, and in the sense of this, you're getting 
two fairly substantial adventure games for the price of one, uh, and it should have some modern bells and whistles. That's a real good value for your money. Yeah, like these look like they're complete from the ground up remakes too. Like it's not just a HD filtered up res or something. It's it's completely different game, different camera angles. The puzzles in the trailer by themselves look like the puzzles have changed. So it oh, looks like they're just retelling the story. Uh, but and I assume some of the puzzles that are. I'll use the word iconic for this niche game, but the iconic puzzles I suspect will still be there, but the rest of it looks very different. Uh, so I'm excited to just revisit the story. Uh, yeah, it's it's something that is on our radar. I mean, it's our first game, obviously, and it's certainly something that we are definitely going to be covering, and it's coming out next month, I believe. Yep. Okay, well, that is a that's an adventure game, but uh, let's move on to something a little bit more uh, dead smack in the middle of, you know, it's an RPG, and that is Avowed. I did the write up for this one, and uh, what I, I started with, I started with when folks think of the best follow game, it usually isn't the name Bethesda that comes to mind, and that's because of City Entertainment. Uh, you know, they were the developers of Fallout New Vegas, which is generally considered to be the best follow game, um, for in my opinion, all of the right reasons, uh, and. Obsidian since then has started turning out a lot of their own first party games, including uh, Ty- Tyranny, Pillars of Eternity, uh, and The Outer Worlds. But now they are releasing a, I suppose you could say it's it's their answer to Elder Scrolls. Uh, it's called Avowed, and it's going to be uh, it's going to be an RPG, first person uh, fantasy, and it's going to be it looks very very interesting. Like unlike. Uh, well, unlike Skyrim, it's not going to be completely open world. It's going to be much more like the Outer Worlds in which we're going to have a series of expansive areas to explore. So like mini open worlds. Um, and it looks like magic is a big thing here. It's going to have a lot of character customization, uh, hopefully some great relationships with companions. I mean, Avowed looks really, really good. I love the footage that we've seen so far. It has a lot to live up to. Uh, with Baldur's Gate 3 getting released this year, which has really changed the game in terms of, I think, what a lot of gamers expect from uh, fantasy RPGs. So we'll see. But I mean, I really like everything that comes out of Obsidian Entertainment. So I'm super, super excited for this. I still need to play Pentiment. (laughs) I do too. It's installed on my computer right now. I think Amanda and I are going to play it together. Nice. Nice. So is is one of the screenshots... uh, a cordyceps infected bear because that's kind of nightmare fuel for me yes yeah, it's, it's but it looks it like is. a really cool game otherwise yeah besides the nightmare fuel bear it does look very cool uh, yeah there is a uh, soon Ugh. wow that that is a nightmare fuel bear right there i'm looking at a screenshot at the moment <laughs> Oof, someone someone needs to exfoliate <laughs> Ugh, gross um yeah uh it looks very pretty at least i think so i it, i agree i mean i think that uh I am. Um, th- these are generally not the type of games that I play, but like I look at the screenshots and I'm like, man, this just looks so cool. I can't believe I'm saying that, but it's the truth. <laughs> I kind of want to. And Obsidian's name being attached certainly um, makes me more likely to check it out. So yeah, it looks great. Yeah, I mean, it looks it like not that it's we don't have a whole lot to go on. You know, we have mm-hmm. visuals and some other things right now. But like, if we're just talking visually, like it's I would say it's a leap above Outer Worlds too. Like it's really impressive. Not that there's so anything wrong with how Outer Worlds looked, but you know, no, it, uh, it looks it looks like they've uh, they've upped their game literally. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, another thing that I'm going to be very interested about Avowed is um, specifically how can I put this? Uh, something I'm going to be very excited about Avowed is that some news came out a few weeks ago, a few days ago, actually. Apparently, uh, way back in the day, Obsidian approached Bethesda about doing a spin-off uh uh Elder Scrolls game. Uh they were going to uh, very much in the spirit of Fallout New Vegas and apparently Bethesda turned them down flat, which is insane. Wow. Um yeah, oh, god I would have loved to have played that. Mm-hmm. Um but uh Obsidian since then has been playing in the realm of fantasy with the Pillars of Eternity series and also Tyranny, which is a interesting interesting uh RPG which is basically it's kind of it's kind of the aftermath of the villain winning. So you're in like a dystopian the villain has won fantasy world and uh, I haven't played a lot of it but what I have played you are confronted with a lot of player choice and most of it's quite disturbing. Hmm. Um it reminded me a lot of there was a comic a few years ago. Um it was by uh it's it's by uh Mark Wade 
It was called Empire, and it was a fan, just a phenomenal comic about what would happen if uh, the villain won, and a very a, a Doctor Doom esque supervillain uh, wins and manages to kill all the other superheroes in the world, and sets up a uh, dictatorial government with ministers who are the supervillains of this world, and it follows society as a whole and follows the the backstabbing dramas that happen between all of these villains who are for the first time in their lives in positions of power that they wanted to be you know they wanted to be the leaders but now they are under this uh authoritarian well, dr doom essentially it's so good it's so damn good uh and this kind of reminded me a little bit of that tyranny did tyranny did yes i'm sorry yeah. Tyranny did. It's a comic book called Empire, uh, and I highly recommend it if you are looking for a decent comic to read. Um, is anyone else here a fan of, like, I guess the Outer Worlds or any of their other games? I like the Outer Worlds. I just haven't played a ton of it yet. Mm. I really, I think there's a lot to uh, improve on the Outer Worlds. I love the Outer Worlds, um, but I think that it was a first stab at something that I. Th- I'm hoping that Obsidian is going to be able to master with the Outer Worlds 2, which we are definitely not getting next year. Yeah, from it's it's funny because I can definitely see that, but at the same time, there are a lot of components that I look for that are hard to nail and get right that they really got like the the dialogue and some of the, you know, plot threads with the companions and just kind of the feel of the world. Mm-hmm. They they got that sort of like serenity-ish vibe right in a way i think a lot of other like sci-fi games don't Mm -hmm. like i guess sci-fi frontier right whatever you want to call that Mm subgenre yeah they're based only on that i know that they're good at world building how many times jana while you were playing that did you message me and be like hey you like firefly play this oh my god (laughs) uh what i if i recall correctly what i said in the review was this game feels like they produced a full quarter of the game while having the license for Firefly. And then it got pulled out from under them and they were like, well, we just have to make it our own. And then they just kind of did a, a thinly veiled uh, version of Firefly. <laughs> <laughs> like it's, it's so goddamn close. Like the ship, the unreliable looks real close to the, to Serenity. Uh, you have a quirky, absolutely like incredibly lovable chief engineer. You have random guitar music everywhere. Um, it, 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 it plays like Firefly, um, which is not a bad thing. I think a Firefly RPG would be great, but I, we kind of already have one and it's called the Outer Worlds. Yeah. Anyway, moving on now, we are going into, uh, I mean, a lot of people said that the Outer Worlds was essentially, it was essentially Fallout. It was their version of Fallout. Um, and for our next game, it's going to be called Clockwork Revolution. And a lot of people are saying it looks like, uh, it looks like the developer's answer to Bioshock, specifically Bioshock Infinite. Um, so Clockwork Revolution uh, takes place, it's a, it's a first-person RPG, it takes place in a vaguely steampunky world, lots of gears and lots of steam. Uh, and it, I mean, yeah, it, it looks like Bioshock Infinite, which is not the worst thing in the world because Bioshock Infinite, I mean, you can say a lot about Bioshock Infinite, and many have, but one thing that has aged incredibly well is the overall design and art style of the game. The world created in that game is unbelievably gorgeous. Um, And it's one that I think that a lot of developers have been trying to evoke since without a whole lot of success, but this one I think is coming closer than most. Yeah. Yeah. I think so too. I I forgot which game show or whatever that this was like shown off in, but I was, I was really impressed when they they debuted it. Like a lot of people are saying it's a mix between like fallout and Bioshock. And I have no problem with that idea at all. The problem I have is I think people underestimate just how goddamn hard it is to make a Fallout game or to make a good Bioshock game in the sense that there really has only been one extraordinary Bioshock game and two that were okay, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Has anyone played Bioshock besides me? I'm hoping I played the original Bioshock. I've never played Infinite. Um, but I mean, I, I, it's not for lack of liking it. I really hmm. enjoyed it. So like, I, I, I think that, uh, I like it. It almost looks like it's, um, almost like, a, almost like a theme park look to it to some degree too, to me, like, as I'm looking at some of these screenshots, um, and, uh, it's got like a slightly creepy, um, steampunk vibe to me. Um, and yeah, I mean, like I, I really enjoyed the storytelling in, in Bioshock. And so if it, if it can even come close to that, 
I will be excited to play it. Yeah, I'm looking at some screenshots here too. And uh, one of the characters, um, one of the characters here, he has like a, uh, he has like a, uh, let me see, I'm trying to describe him. Um, it looks like he has incredible facial hair that is like two <laughs> waves, two scoops coming out of his face. And he has you know, kind of I like, was trying to figure out how to describe that exact thing when I started <laughs> talking. So I appreciate that. That's very good. <laughs> uh, he kind of reminds me of Count Olaf from a series of unfortunate events. Oh my God. <laughs> yes. Like he kind of looks like Jim Carrey is playing him. Well, we can hope, right? I would love for Jim Carrey to show up in a video game in the same style as like Keanu Reeves in Cyberpunk 2077. <laughs> that would be, be incredible. <laughs> yeah, right. I would love that. That would be great. The, this is one of those games where like I'm I'm unfortunately not an expert on the developer, but I mean, I've heard good things about Wasteland and Torment and several other of their games. So, I mean, it's coming from a good place, I think. So I'm I'm hopeful for it. Yeah, it's interesting. Wasteland and Wasteland or Wasteland 2 and Wasteland 3 are both... Uh, spiritual successors to well i guess no actually they're direct sequels to uh a uh rp a western rpg called wasteland which was fallout is a spiritual successor of wasteland um and then wasteland 2 kind of picked up on that in a weird way wasteland 2 is a spiritual successor of fallout the original fallout um and fallout 2 so it's been an interesting i, I played some of wasteland 2 and it's a real good rpg um, especially if you like Fallout and especially if you like the original Fallout and Fallout 2 and you miss the, uh, the turn-based, uh, mechanics, that's, it's a game that you probably would really, really like. So them working on this, that's, that gives me a little bit of hope. I'm going to be honest. I didn't realize it was them. It was, uh, in Zilly? In Exile. Is that how you pronounce it? Exile? In Exile? Oh, that, that would make, in Zilly doesn't make any <laughs> sense. In Exile makes a lot of sense. Uh, in Exile Entertainment, I didn't know that they were responsible for this. So that's actually, that makes me more excited about this. Cool. I don't think I I picked up on that when it was announced, but yeah, I noticed now. Yeah. Well, anyway, let's move on to something that I think that uh, every single person at RPG Fan is super excited about. And that is the Dragon Quest Three HD 2D remake. So uh, it's been almost three years since we got this announcement. And since then, we have heard almost nothing about Upkiss. it nothing no, nothing at all <laughs> i it's it's actually optimistic for this even on this list so i was gonna say exactly those words <laughs> like i didn't realize it had been three years <laughs> no we're, we're willing it to happen next year i don't we have no real indication that it's going to but except that it's been three years like i'm sure they're making progress wait, wait can we can we use our retro powers for this one? Oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh i don't have those we'd have to have solosi here um, I mean, honestly, you're probably right. I mean, although I do think it actually has odds are based on previous years that Dragon Quest three HD 2D remake has a better chance of coming out next year than Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. So <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. Yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll get to that in a few minutes. Um, it's fascinating. This is taking so long because I don't I don't want to be dismissive, but it's Dragon Quest three. There's not a ton there. Um even like the art style, I understand they're trying to go for the HD 2D uh, uh, perspective, but it doesn't look like they've changed the real design or graphic style of the game. It looks like they're really trying to be true to what originally was there. It doesn't seem like they're adding story to it. It It is interesting because like the, it's really easy to, to look at this, you know, the HD 2D style and be like, well, that seems like it should be, I mean, I'm sure it is like a, a more cost effective way to do a remake than something like Final Fantasy seven. Um, but when you look at like how this was announced three years ago and then you look at Final Fantasy seven remake, even though it seemed like it took forever to happen, there was there was five years between it being announced and released. And I'm like this has been three years. I don't know. It's just, it's one of those things where you just think like, well, if they're going this route, you wouldn't think it would take a super long time. Because also, you'd think they would want to do others in the series too. Yeah, it's been two and a half years since it was announced. Presumably, they wouldn't have announced it until it was well into development, at least a year. So that's three and a half years. So approaching four years, we haven't heard anything about it. So chances are it's going to be an additional couple of months before we hear anything to begin with. So bare minimum, four years of development time for a HD 2D remake of Dragon Quest Three, which is, and I know it has a lot of fans, and I'm one of them, but it is not the most complex game in the entire world. 
Yeah, I, I it, it surprises me. I was going to say, I sort of wonder if this is the kind of game that a big publisher like Square Enix would just finish and hold on to for an empty slot in the schedule. Like, I feel like they've had a busy couple years. <laughs> and I, I can yeah. see it. I, I would... I think, Josh, I think you may have hit the nail on the head. I bet this is sitting in a drawer somewhere. Need, need to wait for Rebirth and Dawn Trail to drop, and then maybe. Yeah. 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 Maybe they're, they're like learning something from the last couple of years where they released like a dozen games in the fall, all mm-hmm. like back to back. Maybe they're like, wait, that's not a good idea. People can't buy them all. <laughs> or from their you know previous track record with uh, remakes. Yeah. Mm. It's like, yeah, space them out a little better. Yeah, Square Enix is... More so than just about any other developer, they just puzzle the crap out of me nowadays. I don't know what they are anymore. I don't think they know what they are anymore. They have hits occasionally. I mean, Foam Stars is yep. clearly going to be the the, yep. the sleeper hit of 2024. <laughs> I'm, that was definitely the toughest toughest cut from this list, let's I'm be honest. I'm furious that you cut it from the list, Zach. I cut it. I cut it from the list. You don't, cut don't, it. Oh. don't blame Zach. Oh. <laughs> Mr. Abusing His Power coming in here and removing clearly it's the not, best game. It wouldn't be fair to the other 29 games to include Foam yeah. Stars. <laughs> It was like a semi-collaborative effort, but like when I came back to it, Mike had already eliminated it. So, <laughs> <laughs> boo hiss, boo. Uh, well, when eventually Dragon Quest Three HD Two D Remake comes out, I suspect that we are going to be very enthusiastically receiving it because it's a classic Dragon Quest game with a very, very fancy, beautiful, fresh coat of paint. And I think that if it does well, I mean, if it does well. Hopefully that means four, five, and six as well. Uh, I would like that because I've never liked... Okay, I actually do believe that four, five, and six for the DS were some of the best remakes ever made, but I've never liked the camera rotating uh, the camera rotating perspective in Dragon Quest uh, in Dragon Quest games and in, in modern Dragon in modern retro Dragon Quest games. I've never liked it. Uh, I don't know why it just never really clicked with me. So I would love to see uh, four, five, and six in this style with a fixed camera. I would drop my entire life for a version like that. A five looks like this. <laughs> I'm a little surprised so, I didn't go with five to begin yeah. with. To be honest, I mean, there's already been like a PS2, I think, version of it. Um, so that may, maybe makes sense. But yeah, yeah, three. Maybe. I don't think has been remade since the Game Boy Color. I mean, technically, there's a mobile version that is available on the Switch, but don't play it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it's going to be an interesting. It's going to be an interesting time when it comes out, uh, and to see. Hopefully, it's worth the wait. I mean, it it seems like they're doing a pretty straightforward, straight shot remake with no extra content. Or if there is extra content, it'll be like bonus content. It doesn't seem like they're deviating from the game at all or expanding it in uh, a la Final Fantasy. Uh, seven so i mean we'll see they could i mean do we know i'm assuming based on the screenshots we don't know you're right and that would be the only reason i could possibly think why it would take this long aside from it being in a drawer somewhere let's move on to another dragon game now uh one that is was i think equally unexpected to the announcement of dragon quest 3 although happened a lot sooner uh and that is dragon dogma 2 so dragon uh, dragon's dogma came out in god uh 12 years, 11 years ago. It came out 11 years ago. And uh, since then, we have gotten very, very little. Uh, And finally, Capcom announced it. And uh, we're getting it pretty early next year, as a matter of fact. I did not play Dragon Dogma. Uh, I I, I completely missed it because this is a generation of game. It's from a gaming generation that I, I just missed. Uh, but when it was announced, wow, did it, people were excited. Yeah, I was surprised. I mean, maybe it's just, I, I don't recall the reception to the first game being that overly positive, but I feel like it's one of those games that maybe people have grown to like more over the years. Or maybe when they like kind of re, whatever Dark Arisen was, uh, not a remake, but they kind of like added and upgraded yeah. and expanded the game. But So maybe it just got better later, but I was I just remember the original uh, impression was like, yeah, fine. So it's interesting seeing so many people so excited about this. I'm happy about it. I'm glad they are. A lot of people compare the combat in Dragon's Dogma to Final Fantasy 16. And I think I actually think it has the same combat um, designer, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so that makes me like more interested in playing it. But then I like read so much more about the jank of it. And I'm like, eh, maybe not yet. <laughs> um, 
so yeah, I mean, I think it's awesome that uh, they're taking a game that it seems like had a lot of potential and they've tried to like put coats of paint on and coats of paint on and maybe they're going to take this and make it into something great. So I think that um, the people who are excited about it, even people who like played it and were like, yeah, this has some potential. Maybe they think that it can see that potential. Mm. Oh, wolf. Uh, Kyle Miller gave it a 68 for from us. <laughs> See, I mean, that's, yeah, that's what I remember back then. So that was my general impression too, is it seems like just in recent years, I hear more people saying, oh no, this game was really great and maybe just wasn't appreciated when it came out. I have no memory at all of this game coming out at all, which could be an indication of just how, I don't know, it's, it just didn't seem like a big RPG to me. But I guess that people are really excited about this sequel. Uh, and it looks good. I'm not going to lie. It looks real good. It does. Yeah. That's kind of exciting. It's open world. Uh, it's going to be, you know, it's an action RPG. So a lot of combat in that sense. Uh, Zach, you may get some, some uh, scratch that Final Fantasy 16 itch. I'm down for that. <laughs> Absolutely. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, moving on now, we have Dungeons of Hinterburg. I got to be honest. I know next to nothing about this game. Um <laughs> I've looked at screenshots of it. It seems to be Zelda inspired. It's obviously very, very pretty. Um, I mean, Zelda inspired inspires thoughts in me that we should ask Josh. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for it. Um, this is the first time I've ever heard of this game or was looking at the screenshots at all. But yeah, I'm uh, going to keep it on my list now because I'm kind of interested. Uh, it does. It looks like a little 3D Zelda-like game and you don't actually get very many... 3D Zelda likes. No, it's so much easier be... to make a 2D Zelda like. Right. And it's got some like kind of modern elements. Like, is that a, a gondola? And like the little mm-hmm. town looks cute, but kind of like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. actually, honestly, kind of like one of the ski towns in Colorado. Yep. I was going to say the entire game looks like it takes place in the mountains. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It, it may, well, I guess I, it doesn't really take place in modern mm-hmm. day based on the pictures. It's very. Modern fantasy, I'll I'll call it, but uh, yeah, but yeah, it's it's very interesting, and like even having only known about it now for five minutes, I uh, am mm-hmm. pretty interested, and I'm gonna keep my eye on it. It uses cell shaded graphics uh, in a. I don't. I, it's difficult to call cell shaded graphics realistic, but in a way that's more realistic than Wind Waker, anyway. Yeah, the proportions I, of the characters sure, the proportions are proportions are correct. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. but I like the idea of the the cell shaded and like also some like comic book style like print style shading. There's like half tones mm-hmm. and lines, and it, it's a really really interesting look. Yeah, and it looks cohesive. Yeah, and uh, I think the Steam page says explore the Alps. Yeah, so takes that, place that gives the, me the idea. The of Austrian setting. Alps. Okay. Yep. Well, the Colorado ski towns want to be that, so. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Little known fact: Austria is actually cell shaded. Oh, yep. wow! I've got, Whenever I've you go, go there. that's wow. the, that's the thing everyone says. I mean, mm-hmm. it is a beautiful country. Let's just be honest. <laughs> if you've never been there. It's amazing. <laughs> I have not. It's, um, it's incredible. But honestly, if I go now and it's not cell shaded, I will be disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's the most beautiful place in the world. So <laughs> you'll enjoy. <laughs> okay, uh, moving on now. I. There is no way to describe the amount of anticipation and joy that comes from the first line of Zach's. Of the, Zach, you just take this one. Just go. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I, you did Chronicle. 100 Heroes. I mean, like, I, you know, I, I have spoken so many times about this game that I actually feel like I am not the right person to take it because, like, I don't have anything new to say about it. Like, I've said it so many times. Like, a Uden Chronicle, 100 Heroes, it's coming in April got delayed a couple of times uh i i when the kickstarter was announced uh you know i was actually relatively early in my time at rpg fan but people still knew me well enough to know like just how excited i would be um Mm -hmm. about about this game and everything i've seen about it looks incredible they just released uh, like a gameplay like overview trailer a couple of days ago and like they've included war battles uh just like they didn't speak it in uh the the, the combat looks like it, it's doing some really interesting things with like um like hiding behind things so like the area itself is going to be something you have to play around with but also like those dual text type of ideas are still there um and you know it's everything i have seen about it every time i see a new preview every time i see something new I, I'm actually afraid that my hype level is too high for Uden Chronicle and uh-huh. that I'm going to be disappointed uh, because there's no way it can match that hype level. It's just like actually impossible. Um, 
but I I I, I am insanely uh, excited for this game and uh yeah, that, that, that's what I have to say about it. <laughs> I mean, it sounds a little bit like you're just hedging your bets to prevent crushing disappointment. I got to be honest. I think it looks fantastic. Oh, it does. <laughs> it really <laughs> it does. So good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Every it's looked fantastic since thing I the see. first trailer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, agreed. And it, and it just like keeps building from there. Like I like there's nothing about it where I'm like, oh, I feel like I don't like the Earth's Dale or like you could do this better. Like, no, no, this that looks great. That looks great. That looks great. And yeah, it's I I I. I don't think I can take a week off of work, but I will. <laughs> it looks like we're getting a sequel this weekend in two. That's right. what it looks like. Mm-hmm. It's really um, impressive that it has looked impressive from day one because, like, it it's pretty easy to like compare this to like the campaign and everything about Bloodstained. Uh, mm. It's another Konami uh, property and another former Konami creator. And I mean, I really like Bloodstained. Uh, I I do lo- too. Looking back at the Kickstarter, it was more like a well, like conceptually, this sounds good. Because they don't, I don't remember if they showed much game or if they did, it was very early and it looked all right. Um, and by the end, it like the game, the final game looked way better than what it used to. But like the fact that this game looks as promising and as impressive from day one, like I can't even, after how many years now, like it's just going to be, I think, yeah, that sort of justifies some hype levels. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, that, that original campaign video i still remember watching yeah when they're going around like <laughs> recruiting everyone i'm like that was Aww, so much fun like so cute the idea that they all get to work together again is just yeah. really really cool it's i don't know the entire idea behind crowdfunding for video games and thing it really does have a let's get the gang back together uh and sometimes you get a hit sometimes you you, know, you, you capture that magic and sometimes it feels like the magic isn't quite there anymore which is a shame but in this particular case yeah, I think it looks real good. Yeah, I'm okay. really, really hoping for. I'm, I'm hoping for Sweet in three, not Sweet in three, but like I'm hoping yeah. for Sweet in three. <laughs> it, it, its graphic style is stunning. It pulls a lot from the Sweet in graphic style, but also sure. from HD two D mm-hmm. uh, with the depth and everything. It, it looks modern. It looks great. You know, in in Rising, which is a prequel to it, uh, was like sort of up and down in terms of the reception. I think most people were just kind of meh on it. Um, like I thought it was fine. I, I liked it more than most, um, which I'm excited about as well. But I also think that regardless of whether you were like you liked it, you didn't like it, whatever. Like I think it, it laid the groundwork for what is potentially a really interesting world, um, mm. like like a sweep it in like really interesting world. And I think that one of the things that is challenging for this series to live up to is like Sweet in is such a lived in whole world um, that we only got maybe a third of what we could have gotten in terms of like the whole scope of all the great runes and all that stuff. Whereas here, like they're building from the ground up. And I think that you can see them learning from that in ways that I think are really compelling. And, you know, Moriyama has like worked on a lot of games since then. Mm. Um, and none of them have been great. Like I, I, I thought the Alliance Alive was like, pretty good i guess um but here it seems like he's just like he knows what he wants to do he's gonna do it and he understands how to do it right and again i i feel like i'm overhyping it but like i i'm very excited (laughs) i don't think you're overhyping it i think that the level of hype is exactly where it should be for this game i think for fans of you know the ps uh, psx era this is going to be is going to be something special hopefully Fingers crossed. We're hoping we're hoping for something a little closer to Bloodstained than uh, Mighty Number no. Nine. Oh, jeez. Oh, I actually forgot about that one. Yeah, I think the developers of this game are a little bit. I I, I trust them more. Yeah, if that makes yeah. sense. Anyway, we're moving on now to another game that has a lot of hype, and to be, it, it's a piece of DLC actually, and this is going to be. I think it's going to be interesting to see what reception this DLC gets next year, because if it is of the scale, uh that i think some people are suspecting it might be a this dlc might be a contender for game of the year next year and this is this is elden ring shadows of the earth tree um so elden ring i mean what else can you say about elden (laughs) ring uh you don't really need to say anything about elden ring it's elden ring uh but since then fans have been pretty desperate for more lore more exploration more bosses that make you want to hurt yourself (laughs) um and it looks like this game is this this dlc is going to be delivering all of that in spades uh yeah i have not played elden ring because uh souls likes scare me (laughs) zach i know that you have recently got into some i i mean i am probably within 10 hours of clearing elden ring as of today um 
so I can speak to this a little bit because I've played uh, as in the last two months, I've played Bloodborne, Dark Souls 1, Dark Souls 2, Sekiro, Demon Souls. And now I'm on Elden Ring. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's it's not healthy. Wow, you are literally all. a glutton for punishment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not good. Um, so um, I, I'm very close to the end. I haven't hit like, you know, the legendary bosses of Elden Ring yet. But the thing that excites me about it, first of all, is that like we know based on the key art that it's going to focus on a character who we know a lot about um, and who's mentioned a lot. Um, mm-hmm. as uh, a critical character, I'm guessing they will end up being like the super uber final boss. And like, if you don't like the way Soulsborne DLCs usually work is that they will usually up the challenge. And to be honest, like if you play Elden Ring the way that I want to play it, like Elden Ring is already probably the hardest Soulsborne game. Mm-hmm. Um, like, and so like, I, I'm curious to see what they're going to do, but like also thinking about like the concept of like these open spaces and like how much of an open space are they going to give in this DLC? Mm-hmm. How much space are they going to give you to work in? Because like, hypothetically you could have spent 30 hours and th- those of you who've played, you know, new Zelda games understand this. I could have spent 30 hours in the first zone without mm-hmm. even like getting to the first major boss. And like, I don't know if they're going to give us two zones. Are they going to give us one? They've worked on this for a lot longer than they usually work on the DLCs, but I will say that Soulsborne DLC is usually better than the base game. Actually, it's that's true in all the cases. Uh, in Bloodborne, it's better. In Dark Souls 3, it's better. In Dark Souls 1, it's better. Um, there wasn't any for Sekiro or Demon Souls, but um, I, I, I'm very excited to play it, but I also am scared. <laughs> that, like they, they, The aggression level in Elden Ring bosses is already so high. It's like absurdly high. Um, mm. that I, I don't know how much more challenging they can make it at this point. Um, so we'll see. But uh, I, I'm very excited for it. I will certainly be playing it when it comes out. Um, but yeah, I, it, it looks amazing from the very limited information that we have. But that's that's what Soulsborne does. They give you no information, <laughs> even mm-hmm. in the game. <laughs> I don't think that people want information. I think that yeah. at the moment, people just kind of want to anticipate. And boy, mm-hmm. are they anticipating. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I, I, I certainly am. Does any has anyone else played Elden Ring? I put about sixty hours into Elden Ring and then uh, stopped playing for no reason. Just one of those games I never got back to finishing. Uh, the the bur- the burnout on that game is real. Uh, it's a lot, man. I, I've like, thought about going like, back multiple times and it just hadn't got there. And then a Zelda game came out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like if you mix the open world elements of something like a Zelda, and it feels like that in a lot of ways with just like the challenge of a Soulsborne game, and it like eventually like it wears on you. Mm. Um, I will be, I, I'm 70 hours in and I, I know sort of what I need to do to finish and I'm, I'm excited to finish. So, uh, but I'm still excited for the DLC. I really would like to explore that open world, but it is the bosses that make me go, eh, do I really want to do this? It, it's not the one I would start with. If you wanted to try a Soulsborne game, Bloodborne is the right, right place to start. It is the one I started with. Um, I really, really <laughs> ended up liking it a lot. Um, just, just running around the world. Great time. I know it's not a Souls like, but it was inspired by a Souls like. Salt and Sanctuary was my introduction to the genre, and I know it's two D, but I hated it. <laughs> um, God, I hated it. That was a hard podcast to do with Solosi because everyone else on it kind of liked it, and I was like, I hated it so much. Um, so I've always been reluctant to try a Souls like, just in case I try one, and I'm like, nope. Mm. But. I am very excited to see the reception that it gets as a fan of, as a fan of the industry and absor- and, and observing things like this. Uh, the, it has given me tremendous pleasure to watch just how many people adore Elden Ring mm-hmm. uh, and how it lived up to the hype in a way that a lot of games don't. Uh, so I really, really hope that the DLC does too. Yeah, you've got to have some appreciation for that. Oh yeah, yeah. that was one I think they announced way too early. Yes, um, it was just like. Oh, it's coming one day. It's coming one day, and then it suddenly, suddenly just released. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm I'm glad too because not knowing anything about that game for years was like, boy, that's uh, mm-hmm. that better be good. And it was. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. There's got to be. Some, I'd be very curious to get a bird's eye view into the uh, the logic of game announcements and just how far ahead you should announce them and what it gets you. Uh, versus like there's a certain point where yeah you you want to build anticipation for something but there comes a certain point where that anticipation is replaced by this is never coming out (laughs) and i think you want to try to avoid that uh while maximizing the anticipation and i think that some people miss the mark right and and you know there's obviously probably not a specific formula but like there's so much variation yeah 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 
Well, let's move on now to a game that, to be honest, I will be surprised if it comes out in 2024. I think this is going to be one of those uh, <laughs> aspirational games in this list. Um, and that is Fable 2024. So this is the first uh, new entry in the Fable series in a long, long time. Uh, looks like it's a going to be a bit of a reboot rather than a, rather than maybe the next entry. Uh, Fable is a game that I missed. I have never played a Fable game. However, I do know that it is beloved by a good many people. Uh, and it, it, it's very, how can I put this? The series is very witty. It relies on a lot of, uh, a lot of wit to carry it forward. So it looks like based on the trailer that this game may have captured that wit. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how, uh, if they manage to capture the the magic of the gameplay. Yeah, I'm cautiously optimistic about this one. Um, mm-hmm. Like, I uh, I bought an Xbox 360 to play Fable 2. Uh, probably mm-hmm. the only time I ever bought hardware specifically to play one game that wasn't Zelda. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, I absolutely adore the, like, the way the combat, where you can just rapidly go from sword to gun to magic just in one scenario Uh, absolutely love it i was playing fable 2 again earlier this year and i think it aged incredibly well Uh, Mm. i would be surprised if the new fable game plays like the old ones Uh, it might end up feeling yet yeah we haven't really yeah we haven't really seen gameplay i would be surprised if it feels at all like a now 20 year old game. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm cautiously optimistic. I just got to see some more. I'm a little worried. It's going to be a little bit too elder scrolls for me. <laughs> I'm not really mm. an elder scrolls person, uh, but we'll see. I'm glad the series is alive again, at least. Mm-hmm. Has anyone else played fables and is excited for this? Um, I am not. Yeah, it it is. It's actually, it's kind of interesting. I know we're just going through this list alphabetically, but it, it is another thing that kind of falls into what we just talked about where, you know, this was announced in, I think, 2020. Uh, I only know that because originally on on the site, we called this like Fable 2021. And now we're just like, every year we just keep adding a number to it because it's like <laughs> it was supposed to come out. And we thought it might come out 2021. Um, and we just haven't heard much since then. It's been another one like it's just been kind of lingering. Which of course leads leads to these exact conversations. We're like, it's a new developer. Yeah. How is it going to be? We don't know. They're not saying a lot about it, so it's interesting. I mean, to be fair, this was the first year that we actually got. Well, it's not exactly game footage. It's theoretically in-game footage, but it's true. Uh, we got the trailer, so you know, maybe we'll get something pretty soon. That would be nice. I think some people would be excited about that. Yeah, uh, I actually, I, I, I don't think it's crazy to say it comes out next year, but they did no, announce really? it way too soon. Um, yeah like way too soon and that's the thing is like it's we know it's been development for like five years probably <laughs> mm, yeah. so i i think it'll i think it's a good bet for next year but yeah they I, need to stop i do <laughs> i do like uh i want to highlight a little bit quickly like what jimmy said in his, his write-up for this that you know it's developed by this studio who does the who did forza horizon uh, which is not, if you just heard that, you're like, wow, that's a really odd choice for an RPG. But he also points out that, you know, Guerrilla Games before Horizon came out was just known for Killzone. And we would have thought the same thing then. Like, what? It's like, really? They're going to do an RPG, huh? Let's see how that turns out. So, like, you really never know. Uh, so I, I think no, it's, you're right. You don't. I'm really interested in seeing how that turns out. Well, um, let's move on now to, uh, I guess technically a sequel to a Nintendo 3DS game uh, called Fantasy Life. So this is, oh, here's an interesting question. How do you, how do you pronounce this? Is it Fantasy Life I, the girl who steals time? Fantasy Life, lowercase Roman numeral one, the girl who steals time? <laughs> I'm going to say I. It's Fantasy Life Internet. No, I don't, I don't, <laughs> know. I don't know what the I is for. Wouldn't that be I, Fantasy Life? Oh, yeah. I mean, if they want to, if they want to evoke that time period, you know, that's how they should do it. They should put an I in front of it. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is, Technically, a sequel to Fantasy Life for the Nintendo 3DS, um, which is a uh, life sim RPG style game, and one that I know nothing about, literally nothing. So I know that Sam is pretty excited about it. Uh, has anyone played Fantasy Life? No, that's one of those ones I missed. Wow, we didn't even review it. So yeah, I, I can't tell you. It's something I specifically did not play. Um, 
<laughs> Not <laughs> this because was a choice. <laughs> it, it was a choice because I was worried I would spend too much time with it. Kind of uh, game. Um, like even fair. reading the write up here is like comparing it to FF14, and it's like you get a bunch of classes and you get to master all those classes, <laughs> uh, and then Uh-oh. switch between them all the time. And it's the kind of thing where I uh, I play those games and I have to master every single one of the classes. You know, mm. I play FF Tactics and I master the classes and I just spend 100 hours grinding and never finish the game. <laughs> so <laughs> I saw mm-hmm. this game and was like, yeah, this is right up my alley. I'm definitely not going to play it. And, and it, it looks like they're adding an aspect to it that would suck in kind of another subset of people who just want like a cozy home and can t- you can terraform you have an island, houses, furnishings, all of that stuff. So it's it, it's kind of got the double whammy there. Yeah, yeah it's like, way. oh, there's a bunch of skills like Final Fantasy fourteen, and also it's cozy like Animal Crossing. I'm like, oh boy, that's that's dangerous for me too. What I'm hearing is this game is trying to steal the thunder from like a dragon infinite wealth, but we'll talk about that in a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I just I just realized how hilarious the subtitle of this game is now. The girl who steals time? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. the game that steals time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> we just talked about how much how much of your, the, your life this game could suck away. That's hilarious. It's a warning. <laughs> Don't play it. <sighs> well, now I want to. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, let's move on now to a game that I think that will be stealing an awful lot of time in 2024, mm-hmm. specifically early 2024. I can't believe this is coming out in early 2024. It boggles my mind. Uh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. So Final Fantasy VII uh, Remake in a weird way feels like it just came out and it sure didn't but um we're getting now getting the second part of the final fantasy 7 trilogy and we've gotten some footage and we've gotten some music and we've gotten a theme song and i don't think that anyone knows what to expect from this game i think that everyone is holding their breath and thinking what is going to happen in this story and we just do not know are they going to go for the obvious or are they going to subvert everything? Uh, yeah. Regardless of what happens, people are going to be pissed. <laughs> <laughs> that's always true. Yeah, but that's yeah. everything. That's a, that mean, could I be think, a lot of games. I think they mm. just released something that said like that the main campaign would take like forty to sixty hours. I think yeah. I'm paraphrasing here, um, and that if you like were completioning, it would be like a hundred hours, which means that it is significantly more ambitious. Mm than uh remake was uh because remake even if you like basically like 100 percented it on the first run probably took you 35 hours maybe 40 if you struggled um so yeah i mean like even as a person who did not love the ending of remake which i have i again I, i've said this so many times i don't even want to i don't even want to say it again <laughs> I, I I loved the game itself. Uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake was a brilliant game. Uh, the combat was amazing. I, the work they did on the characters was stunning. In, in particular, mm-hmm. like the female members of the cast, yep. uh, Jesse. Like, oh my goodness! Avalanche. Like they, they, yeah, exactly. Like they, they they did so much good work there that like even if I am not necessarily convinced by the meta n- narrative elements that they are going for. I'm convinced that they understand that characters are what drives this narrative. And I'm convinced that that will continue. I, I'm excited to be able to explore some areas and see how they do that mm-hmm. and how they play around with some of the meta narrative things. And maybe I have enough space now to where like I can kind of accept that their vision is not mine. Um, and I, I think it's going to be fabulous. And I am if it wasn't for Eden Chronicle, it would be my most anticipated game of the year, mm-hmm. um, despite my uh, issues with the ending. So I, I, I'm super excited. I'm super excited for the appearance of Vincent and, and everything else that this game is going to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, I, I think it looks fabulous. I want to go to Cosmo Canyon. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> right? I can't wait. I uh, I know exactly what Mike is the most excited for. Mike is excited for some DLC where you get to power wash a spaceship and a coffin. Damn it. <laughs> How did you know I was going to talk about We Oh, why didn't we think of that? Hillary and I were talking on the way. It's like, you know what? This would be a good time for more crossover with Power Wash Simulator. No, we didn't think about the coffin. We didn't th- oh, that's so disappointing. That's perfect. Or the or like just the Shinra build, the library. Yeah. I mean, look, I, I won't spend a lot of time on it, but, you know, prepping for this podcast, we were like, okay, let's think about what we're excited about. I'm like, well, you know, I, uh, I'm sure everyone knows by now I've... I, I'm, 
like Zach has talked about the ending, how he feels about the ending a lot. I have mentioned way too many times that I've yet to finish remake um, and see said ending, but I definitely know how to power wash Midgar. So <laughs> if they do, if it they needs do it, honestly, huh? it, it does. Needs it, honestly. But I'm like, if they do another one for this, uh, I would be all over it. So what do we decide? What do we decide with the five stages? The laboratory, the, the observatory, the and Cosmo observatory Canyon. right, right, right. Uh, something in Junon, because like there's enough Junon can be filthy too. You know, there's enough mm. dirty parts of Junon. Yeah, maybe like the Chocobo Farm. Yes. Oh God, yes. <laughs> and I mean that's just gross. But I, I do not think you'd want to bring a power washer to a Chocobo Farm. That's going to make things worse. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And then I don't know the whatever the fifth one is, whether the that's coffin. whether that's a coffin. What's going on? the whole room though. Yeah. The whole coffin. Yeah, the whole room. room. Yeah. What's you know what's terrible? Like genuinely terrible i feel bad about it i'm trying to figure out what my holiday game is going to be and i'm like on the one hand i really 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 want to play alan wake 2 and on the other hand i kind of want to say fuck it and just download power wash simulator do it it's probably on sale it could not po- those two games could not possibly <laughs> nope. be nope. any more different i know but only one of them has back to the future dlc jono I, sam lake's a madman who knows what he's going to put in the <laughs> dlc for alan wake 2 <sighs> Oh, we forgot the fifth one. I came up with what the fifth one is. <laughs> the, fi- the fifth one is the is the altar in the city at the end. Uh-huh. And, who, oh, and, who, the- and who gives you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where I mean, Sephiroth would be like, hey, I'm going to use this later. Can you clean up this uh, stage for me? Well, you know, it would be really, really dark. It would be really dark if your job was to clean it up afterwards. No. <laughs> yes, and this was a misunderstanding <laughs> the two of us had <laughs> right before coming on the show, because no. that is what I thought he meant. No, I meant before. <laughs> Getting it ready. Anyway. Um, <laughs> that- Just imagine you wheeling it in and be like, Jesus, what happened in here? <laughs> <laughs> exactly what it looks like. All right. Um, all of that aside, um, I am I am very excited for this one. Um, I what I have seen and played and know of remake, like I think it, it's great. I like actually like that they, you know, you got that in depth with everything in Midgar, but the mm-hmm. the change in setting and seeing what they can do with a mm-hmm. big world and like the fields and greenery and like uh, just all the different settings that are in this section of Final Fantasy VII. Uh, I I cannot wait to see what they do with it beyond what we've seen. But I mean, like Mm -hmm. it's, it looks fantastic. I mean, I remember in the original, just after Midgar feeling this amazing sense of possibility and getting really excited about exploring the world. And I think that's something they could recapture really, really well in Rebirth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I, I'm also looking forward to like playing the other characters because I haven't read a lot. I did read a bit of that game informer preview the other day and they talked a bit about, um, did they officially say it's, they are pronouncing it. Kate Sith, is that what they're saying? Um, th- did That's you, the way I over pronou- always pronounce it. Did in my you head. read how how he plays? Like how like sometimes the the you know he can be separated from the Moogle and there's different moves and it, it's I don't know I, I'm not going to paraphrase. I heard and, that he could be separated from the Moogle and but... share details wrong. But I'm like I'm really interested to see how that plays. It sounds interesting. Mm. Well, it's not the only Final Fantasy game we're reading next year. Uh, we are getting some more. Some more Final Fantasy XIV, uh, Dawn Trail, and uh, Mike, I try to avoid talking about Final Fantasy XIV because this is a game that I know that if I ever played, I'd be in so much trouble and I just don't want to put myself in that position. So why don't you take this one? I mean, Zach can too. I think we're both going to be talking about this one because I'm... I'm happy to supplement whatever you say. <laughs> <laughs> well, you wrote, you did the write-up, so I'm giving it to you. I did do the write-up. Um, yeah, I don't want to like duplicate my write-up too much but you know one of the things that really gets me about this one is that you know n walker n walker really got to me i mean that to to wrap up a story that they've been telling for like nine years at the time is a monumental thing i mean there's no way they should have wrapped it up as well as they did and like even like small plot threads from like years and years past like they touched on and like they did so well at doing that and um I'm impressed. I like that they said, okay, we are actually done with this story now. Because, like, it, it's been interesting following that story all this time. But, like, to say this is done and we're actually starting something new is is actually just a concept I'm not used to yet in 14. Because everything always continued off. And now it's like, no, we're going to a whole new area. We're starting a new story. I, I'm really excited about it. Because as much as I liked it, I'm like, it, I want to see what they do now. Like, I don't, I have no idea where they're going with it. Um hmm looks great actually yeah we're gonna learn more oh geez when is that live letter 
is that like tomorrow? <laughs> or not live letter, letter the fan, fe- the fi- fan fest. I, I don't know when the, the the Japanese fan fest is. We'll find out what the the caster job is though. Uh, yeah. Whatever. Oh man. I, I, I actually don't know. <laughs> That's embarrassing, but I have no idea. I might be wrong. I just, I looked up fan fest dates the other day and I was like, wow, that, okay, no, it's uh January 6th, but it's still okay. sooner than I thought. I th- had in my head that it was like That's very soon, <laughs> January, late January, February, but it's like, oh no, it's a few weeks from now. It's been, what is this? The 10th anniversary? Yeah. Right now it is. For a mm. realm reborn at least. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Mm. Very nice. Yeah. Seems I- like lots of people are celebrating anniversaries this month. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, Don Trail is, uh, I'm not as I'll admit, I'm not as excited for it as I was for N Walker for the reasons that Mike has already described. Like, I was like, oh, I want to see like this story that at the time, like I hadn't actually spent that much time with it come to an end. And like N Walker is just like, uh, it's just like top tier. It's so good. <laughs> um, and it's interesting because, uh, the patches, uh, leading up because they, they really finished it like 6.0. So they've been mm-hmm. releasing new content over the last year and a half, and it has not uh, been exactly what I expected. Uh, it, it sort of told its own story as well. And I, I, I thought it was pretty good, but like not great um, c- compared to what Ed Walker was, which was just like phenomenal. Um, mm-hmm. And so like it makes me a little trepidatious about where they're going to go with it. But like I, I think that it's going to be cool because – they're obviously taking a very different tone here. Like even in the lighter moments of Final Fantasy 14, it, it it's still pretty dark. Uh, whereas this, like they, they keep like kind of framing it as like a summer vacation. Mm-hmm. Uh, and while that doesn't necessarily sound like, I don't know, like my thing in a video game, like I, I, I'm excited to see what they do with these characters who we've known for so long in this very different setting. And uh, Viper, the new melee class, looks really cool, though they say that it's like mm-hmm. technically difficult, which means I absolutely will not be playing it because <laughs> uh, uh, like, no, thank you, uh, monk player over there, Hillary. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, I- I'm very excited about it, but uh, I- I'm I'm less excited than I was for Endwalker. And there are other games I'm actually more excited for, even though Final Fantasy 14 is probably my favorite game. So, yeah, mm. I-, I enjoyed my moment seeing the Scions and the Warrior of Light in a lighter moment on a vacation eating tacos. Yeah. I'm like, what is this? What is this thing? I don't know. I want some happiness for them, but I t- completely get what you're saying. There was a big investment with N Walker. I mean, that you it, just, you can't replicate. No, but I, I'm, I'm curious when, when the rug gets pulled out from under you too, because they're like, it's a summer vacation. Anyway, here's this weird, creepy lab right. and this giant robot, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And this giant you know robot called happen. the eliminator. I'm like, Okay, hang on. Like the level 95 quest is going to totally change things. I get it, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, uh, I mean, I know that many, many people on this podcast are fans of uh, Final Fantasy fourteen, and at least one person is a massive fan of Souls likes. And it seems like Flintlock, the Siege of Dawn, is following in the footsteps of, I guess, Lies of P as a, as a, a second generation Souls like that is taking many of the uh, some of the DNA of souls and is adding in other uh, aspects and, and trying something a little bit different. Uh, it looks pretty good. Uh, doesn't look like something that's particularly catching my eye in terms of my taste, but it does look pretty great. Yeah. I mean like the look of it is great, but I, I am just so um, wary uh, of people who, uh, cause gosh, souls like is like, uh, I'm not even sure what it even means anymore. <laughs> um, I- I'm wary of it. Like I'm curious about lies of P, but like I read about it. I'm like, well, they just made it like even harder. Like that's, a, that's not the point really. It really isn't. Um, so like I, it looks cool, but like until I, until I hear more, I don't really have much of an opinion about it. As I understand it. And this is coming from someone who greatly disliked uh, souls, uh, uh, salt and sanctuary. Uh, the thing about, souls like is they're always hard but they're very rarely unfair when you mm-hmm. screw up it's you that screws up the game doesn't screw you that's that's the phrase people use I, there yeah. are times that i think it's cheap uh, mm-hmm. i don't want to talk about blight town right now but yeah oh, God. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that place uh, yeah, uh, um but yeah i mean that's that, that's the idea but like i i don't know i i guess maybe i I, I've heard the phrase for so long, even before I played a Soulsborne game. And now I'm like, well, I think you guys all kind of missed the point. <laughs> That's one of the things that came up in the, in our, our lives of P review from what I remember from proofing it was that, you know, it hit the mark in a lot of ways, but one of the ways it didn't was that sort of, you know, difficulty curve justified kind of difficulty. Um, so 
hopefully if that's what they're going for with this, they'll, that, they'll get it right. Yeah, if you're going to make a game that hard, balance becomes absolutely paramount. And if you miss the balance even a little bit, it's not people are just going to be angry. They're not going to enjoy it. Right. Yeah. I mean, I don't I, I don't know a lot. You know, I know that this developer did Ashen, which I feel like Ashen was like in development for a very long time. And I, I kind of missed what the reception actually was when the game came out. Um, I, I played it briefly at E3 2019 and I did not enjoy it. So that's all, that's all I, I thought I remember. <laughs> OK, well, hopefully it's better, a little better than that, at least. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I mean, I like the look of it. I, I at least have to, I, I give them credit for not having a, oh God, I don't want to say not having a typical protagonist because it's a woman of color, but also you don't, you don't see that a lot in these games. So, you know, props to that. And I like the, mm-hmm. you know, melee and range weapon look. And I don't know, visually in the gameplay, it looks interesting. I just, as long as it can differentiate itself and like really mm-hmm. be its own thing, I think they could have mm-hmm. something with it. Okay. Uh, let's move on now to, Okay, I just got to... <clears throat> nothing at RPG is inherently funnier to me than year after year making Des write the blurb for <laughs> Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. <laughs> My favorite part is that I was actually the first one who wrote it up years ago. <laughs> mm-hmm. And that was a long time ago. It was like 2018. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I feel like even if this thing gets released this year, we're still going to have to make Des write a blurb for Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. You know, uh, that's most a great idea. For 2025. I love that. I love that. <laughs> My favorite little Easter egg, and I it, it's completely inspired by your love of seeing Des write about this, Jono, is that the graphic, you know, I, I have a certain look for certain features on the site every year, and I use the same basic format for most anticipated as I did last year. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to keep Grim Blue Fantasy in here, and it's going to be actually the same artwork in the same position as it was last year. Uh, <laughs> just as a nod to you. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Well, apparently this damn thing is getting released on February 1st, 2024. I'll believe that when I see it. I <laughs> firmly expect. I mean, like, I don't think you announced February 1st, 2024 this year unless you mean it, because that's so stupid. <laughs> I know, but wouldn't it be just amazing if a month from now on January 21st, they're like, so listen. <laughs> <laughs> I actually think it would be smart in this case. <laughs> I, I don't think I, I, if this game isn't done by now, it's not going to be done. <laughs> I, I honestly don't know what, what would be better for them. It's like February 1st means they're going to get it out there before Final Fantasy seven, um, mm. but also very close to seven. So it's like, I don't know. There, there were so many like uh, press releases and stuff we got over the fall of people that are like, we don't want our RPG to release in August because of Baldur's Gate. So we're just pushing it out like four months because we'll never sell any of these. Um, so like it, it, putting this so close to Final Fantasy VII is a very odd move. So uh, And the Persona 3 remake. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that too. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know. I, I think it. I feel like the series has enough fans that it would still do fine. But it's still just really packed at the beginning of the year. I mean, I think it would do well in Japan, at least, because the bubble game is so huge over there. But here in the West, like I, I I'm just not convinced that it's going to get any sort of numbers uh, if it releases in February. I think the only people who are really anticipating this game coming out is uh, Des. Um, but no, <laughs> I mean, that, that's I, not fair. I genuinely am as well. Like, it looks really cool. Yeah, it looks great. I'm sad that Platinum's not working on it anymore, uh, which that happened years ago now <laughs> uh, that Platinum left uh, the development team. But. Uh, I still think it looks fantastic, and I know the pedigree behind Grand Blue is really strong. Um, hmm. And if I, I I don't even play near mobile games, so I'm not playing the mobile game. But um, <laughs> huh. it, what it, makes Sam play it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I I am still genuinely excited to play it. I just know that if it comes out that day, it won't it won't be for a while. I mean, who knows? This thing might get released. It might have ringing reviews. It might be the biggest surprise hit of 2024. We just don't know at this point. Um, But I'll tell you something that is going to rack up an awful lot of hours from an awful lot of gamers, even though I would be stunned if it gets a full release in 2024. uh, And that is Hades 2. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's my reaction to Hades 2 is going to be a test of my resolve not to play early access. Um, because I, I used to play early access games. In fact, the review I have of Rogue Legacy 2 on the site is from the early access first release of that. And I had a good time in it. Um, and then I played the final version of it and it was like so much better. Um, but at the same time, I'm like, 
God, it's Hades though. And I loved Hades and I really want to play Hades too. And I want to spend time in this world again. And with this, it has so much fun, but at the same time, I, I don't want to get, I want to get the final experience. I, I want to get the intended final experience, but holy crap, it looks great. Yeah. And I mean, that's especially interesting because it's, isn't it the first direct sequel for yep. Super Giant? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. So that's interesting in itself. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> It's pretty ob an obvious statement to be like, you know, Hades is like uh, their their biggest game yet um, in terms of success and like, but uh, yeah, I mean, I was not really, I really was even wasn't expecting them to do a sequel because they just they never have before. I mean, like Hades was an insane achievement. Like it's the only super giant game that I've played to completion. I just recently mm -hmm. was actually hanging out with Mike and Hillary when I did this. Started playing uh, Bastion. Yay! Um, but. Um, it, it it's just like so good like it's so dense with content and with mm -hmm. quality and with different ways of approaching it like i i got my 10 clears then i was like okay i i'm done uh but i loved every moment of getting to those 10 clears and um i i it's the only rogue roguelike i've ever played and i will i will be playing this day one uh because mm -hmm. it's just like the level of quality they brought to it was so absurd that i i i can't even imagine what they'll do with a second shot yeah. at it uh, I think I'm ready for this one uh, because I was just complaining yesterday about how Saturn slash Kronos gets a planet. <laughs> you know, was, this is true. I I've always been a little this. bit mad about that. Yeah. So I guess I'm ready to, you know, face off against him. <laughs> how dare he? <laughs> how dare you get a planet in our solar system when, when who did you say? Athena. Athena didn't get one. Yeah. Mm hmm. Who had, actually that bit you're right that would be a better name for that planet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I guess it, it might be it might also be Minerva, but uh, yes. yeah, I guess Athena would be the better name. The Greek gods' names are always better, at least in my opinion. Um, I'm curious, has anyone seen the uh, no clip documentary about the making of Hades? Oh, I didn't know they had one. No. I want to see it. Now I want to. I'll send you the link after. Yeah, no clips. No clip did a uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, a six part documentary series. Each episode is about. Uh, 30 to 40 minutes each. Um, I don't think it, it, I, I love game. I love game development documentary series, especially when they're like in the room as it's being developed. Yes. It's so interesting. <laughs> but one of the last parts of it is um, uh, because they were getting ready for a release and then obviously uh, COVID hit. Uh, so like the fifth episode is just entirely how the quarantine uh, affected Hades development going into the full release of the game, oh. uh, which apparently was real real chaotic i bet um Yikes. but i i'm, I'm gonna watch this at some point i'm saving it it seems like a really good cottage movie watch to me <laughs> yeah that sounds good does it have elijah wood <laughs> bringing rice krispie treats <laughs> in though i always have to i i'm not gonna lie the number one reason why i want to play psychonauts 2 is so i can watch that documentary <laughs> <laughs> so i can watch the sequel um yeah hades 2 is I have, there are a lot of games on this list and a lot of games period where I'm nervous or I'm thinking, oh, I hope it's good. Or maybe it'll be really, really good. Maybe it'll be a surprise or maybe it'll be bad. Hades 2 is a game that I am not even remotely nervous about whatsoever. I have full faith that this game is going to kick ass. It's just going to, because it's, it's Super from Giant Super Giant. Super is four for four. So yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, Super oh Giant my, doesn't fail. <laughs> No. Like yeah. how, how in the hell did the, how does this company have this good an average? It's crazy. Mm -hmm. yeah, they don't miss. Um, it's great. So I am not worried about this at all. I am going to hold off until the full version is released. I would probably, I would say probably 2025 if we're going to be completely honest. I mean, the first one was, yeah, the first one was in early access for at least a year, right? Yeah. Though it would be pretty cool if it came out holiday 2024. That would be a holiday game to remember. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, moving on to a more traditional RPG would be, I mean, it, actually very traditional in terms of what it's doing. Uh, another Trails game. Um, the Legend of Heroes Trails Through Daybreak. So it's the 11th title in the Trails series. And uh, we're, you know, it's been out for a little while. Like most like most Legend of Hero games, it takes us a little while to get the damn things. Um, I really, really should start this series. 
No, you shouldn't. <laughs> it's too long. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's too long. But then I look at the title that comes after this one in the list, and I'm like, well, if I if I said that was an excuse, I'd be a hypocrite. I actually think that Like a Dragon is actually shorter overall than Trails. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's a lot to plow through with this series, but I do know the people who play it and the people who love it, oh my God, they love it so mm-hmm. much. I, that's, that's generally true. I mean, I've played Cold Steel 1 and 2, and I enjoyed them. And then I was like, I had to play Trails in the Sky because everyone's like, you got to play Trails in the Sky before you play three. And then like, uh, I really don't want to do that. And I've tried it. and It's boring. And Alana has played all but one of them. Um, and she didn't love the most recent one. But I am certain that she will still hop on this this new one immediately when it comes out. Mm-hmm. Um, so I know that people, even people who like are sort of like, eh, Trails, Trails of Cold Steel 4 was bad, which I think is the general opinion. Um, and Reverie was like, pretty good like they're still going to continue because like it has such a hold on people but i mm-hmm. i actually feel like it's getting to the point with this series like that if you haven't started it yet like you're just screwed <laughs> <laughs> um like it's just absurd like how how much you need and like i was able to play trails of cold steel one and two without a whole lot of context i was fine but like i started trails of cold steel three and i was like oh like who are all these people? I I think I'm supposed to know who these people are. I'm like, oh, it's from the last five games you didn't play. Like, okay, <laughs> I'm done. Uh, no, thank you. Uh, like, it, it's it, it's a commitment. I'm not sure that the commitment is 100 percent worth it. It is like super like anime cliche in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, so like, I am not actually excited about this game, but I'm excited that other people are. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I'm glad that they're like after the Crossbell games in this one. Like, they're they're more or less. Well, we're not totally caught up. I mean, the, the f- sequel to this game is going to be out way before we get the first one. But there, we're more caught up in the West than we have been in you know the last three or four years. So um, I think that's good for the people that enjoy mm-hmm. it. And I, I'm not one of the people who doesn't enjoy it because I just like I can't. I can't bring myself to get into it because I know what people say. But uh, it, like Zach said, like you're expected to have this kind of knowledge. And I'm like, that's... It's a lot. Like, I love the idea of it. I love the idea of the games coming together. Like, um, you know, I know Scott has talked about some of them. It's like compared to like, you know, Avengers Endgame. And I'm like, that's great. Like, I'm sure that's incredibly satisfying seeing like all these characters come together from like past games and how everything's connected. Different like branches of the series. But we're also talking, if you make that comparison, though, you're talking about movies you're talking about a bunch of experiences that are two hours a piece not a bunch of experiences that are a hundred hours a right. piece yeah it's yeah, like you can watch all of all of up to end game in like a weekend if you really want to <laughs> right yes. yeah, you can watch every mcu movie and i don't mean to be a hater but like this isn't working on that level like i'm not even a huge mcu fan but like yeah i remember MCU you were movies. slamming the mcu in the 2023 look back episode right yeah i, I and i stand by that but like this still isn't of that quality. Like, I don't think it's worth the time investment. Mm. Um, so uh, that's 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 my not plug for this series. Even though <laughs> I, I liked it, I liked it well enough. Like, it was fine. Um, but like, the end of Trails Cold Steel Two was actually offensive and stupid. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, that, that's that's my take. <laughs> it, I think it's. I don't know. I mean, I guess, like I said, it's they're obviously made for the fans of the series, and that's good. But I, it's also kind of weird that they don't like they're not making a whole lot of, I don't know, like start a new series at some point. I don't know. And like, I think it's just more and more, it's become like a growing thing. It's like, it's just, no one can really get into these because there's not really a lot of good starting points. So I'm like, there's not a jumping on point. Yeah. Like have this keep going. Um, Like ease, ease works a little better because they're, you know, they're not really connected or there's some common threads, but like each game is its own story. There's a reason why in comic books, they, there are every couple of years, there's another issue number one for a long running (laughs) series. It's yeah, there's obviously there's the sales potential of like another first issue, but also it's to give people a jumping on point to get into this world. And it seems like this sort of lacks that. Yeah. My takeaway is that everyone should play one Falcom series or the other. <laughs> I'll just stick with the other one. I guess that means I'm team ease. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, let's move on to from, okay, I'm just going to be a massive hypocrite here and be like, okay, <laughs> everyone should play Yakuza. <laughs> um, you can totally play like a Dragon 7 with no context. Well, see, there you go. See, that that was you their... Can. There's a, it, yeah, that was their, that's their issue number uh-huh, one. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then, of course, they... It up royally with the man who erased his name, but we'll get into that. Um, so we're talking about like a dragon infinite wealth. So 
This is the latest mainline entry in the Yakuza slash Like a Dragon series. I know the rebranding, but it's it's real difficult to talk about Like a Dragon without talking about Yakuza because, you know, like seven of the games are called Yakuza. Um, it's the eighth mainline entry, and it's going to be continuing the turn-based combat from uh, Yakuza Like a Dragon, which was the the soft reboot of the series that featured some characters in cameo roles from the old series, but primarily focused on... Uh, Primarily focused on a, a new set of uh, a new set of characters and a new generation, essentially, and it was super successful in doing that. I love Yakuza Like a Dragon, and in this game, they're much they're combining them much more. So Ichiban, who is the main character of uh, Yakuza Like a Dragon, is teaming up with uh, Kazuma Kiryu, who is the main character of Yakuza to Yakuza Six: The Song of Life, and. Uh, Kiryu recently had a, a little spin-off game called uh, Like a Dragon Gaiden, The Man Who Erased His Name, which I thought was not good. Um, and they're picking up on a lot of story threads of that. And to be honest, that is the only reason why this is not my most anticipated game of 2024. Because otherwise, I am so over the moon excited about this game. Uh, it looks there, it's set in uh, Hawaii, so we're getting a brand new world space. Uh, it's going to be, it looks like there's going to be the same over the top melodrama. The business mini game in this is you're given an Island resort and you have to develop it. It and looks get in so guests. cool. It looks so good. It looks so good. And I am very excited for this. The demo for it after playing the man who erased his name, I was just like, Oh crap. Did, uh, no, this is a series I love so much. And I think, and mind you, I was on the I was on the low end of the opinions about Man Who Erased His Name. I thought the storyline was astoundingly bad, um, but then I played the demo for this, and I was like, "Okay, I got hope back." <laughs> okay, yeah, the, the the this is this is this feels right. Um, I'm just really excited for it. It has everything I love about Yakuza and more of it. It looks like to be the biggest one yet. Whether or not that's a good thing, it, it's apparently the world space is like four times the size of the world space in. Uh, in uh yakuza like a dragon that's and crazy it is crazy they're i mean at that point they are they're approaching open world instead of yeah. uh instead of uh walled garden so i kind of wish that they would go back actually i mean we'll see they might in the future but like rather than keep making it bigger i kind of wish that they would just go back to camarocho and maybe spend more time like developing it even more like the same amount of content as is in a massive open world but in just like a couple of blocks of space that would be really cool to me. i mean i i had a lot of criticisms of uh the original judgment even though i, I liked it but like I, I unless memory is wrong here and correct me if i'm wrong here jano like it was all camarocho like and it felt it was yeah it felt like enough space to me um in judgment um yeah, for did sure. me too. Um, and in and in like yakuza 4 they also expanded it dramatically with uh they expanded the city dramatically with like, you could get up on roofs and there was now an underground. And I think there's just a lot more to explore there than they've been taking advantage of in the last few games because it is Kiryu's playground, so to speak. And I think they're trying to create other ones. I, this is one of my most anticipated games of the year. <laughs> um, and that, I, that might seem strange uh, because like I've played three and a half Yakuza games and two of them aren't even Yakuza games or like a dragon games. I played yeah, one judgment. of them you don't like at all. Right. Yeah. I, I did not like the second judgment game, uh, but I, uh, I, I really enjoyed the first judgment. I had some issues with it, but I liked it. And like a dragon seven. Oh my goodness. I loved it. Oh, so uh, it, it was my game of the year that year. Like I thought it was phenomenal. Uh, I love the cast so much. I, th- there are issues with like, I don't know, like the class system, which I thought was half baked, but like that's nitpicking. Like it was just so, it was like a shot of joy. Mm-hmm. Um, and Ichiban is such a remarkable protagonist and such a clear contrast from Kiryu that it just, it feels so good to play. And it, it felt so perfect to me in so many ways. And I am absolutely jazzed to see uh, eight. I'm actually a little bit disappointed as a person who mostly has played, you know, seven and I've played the side series judgment, like to see that they're bringing more like earlier stuff back. And I think that I- I'm not too worried about it. Like, I'm sure I'll still understand enough. Like I played like half of zero. So like, I know who you know, Kazuma mm. Kiryu is. And, uh, and I liked, I liked that half. I played it as fell off of it, but um, yeah, go I, back. it's real good. Yeah. I, I, I really do intend to, but you know, I, yeah, I know. <laughs> um, um, Got to play Zach, those games. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Zach, you're not alone in that. I, 
I obviously I played for, starting from Yakuza Kiwame and then going back to do playing two and then I, like I played all of them uh, that are available to me and I love all of them and obviously I love Kiryu and I love these characters. I can't help but wish that they made a clean break. I, I really do. I wish that this and maybe they will after this because based on the I mean this actually isn't a spoiler for the game because I haven't played it, but based like with the in the footage and things like that, Kiryu is not doing well. Uh, he, Kiryu is sick, and uh, they might be bringing his story to a conclusion. I don't know. Um, I think I, it. I mean, that is. I got to be honest. Kiryu getting sick is. I'm concerned about it. Not about Kiryu, but I'm concerned about the way they're bringing his story to an end, and I'm hoping that the new team behind infinite wealth can stick that landing. Cause that's going to be a hard landing to, to stick, frankly. Yeah. We'll see, but I have faith because, Oh my God, the demo is fun. I'm very excited. Yeah. Demos. Great. It's, it's a day one purchase for me for sure. The first oh, yeah. one of the year. Absolutely. Oh, I, I never like to pull rank when it comes to being the review manager ever, but like, <laughs> this is one where you get to Jono. I, I pull rank when it comes to like a dragon. <laughs> if I can review the, like a dragon game, I review the, like a dragon game. Oh, yeah, Not I, just because I want to, yeah. I want to keep my stupid in joke. Uh, the something is in crisis. <laughs> the crisis going yeah. it's, <laughs> it's one of my favorite things at RPG fan over the last five years. So thank you. You don't even need to pull rank because we all want you to do it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. exactly. I agree. <laughs> I agree. I'm always excited to read your reviews. And I, I, I thought that your review of uh, the new one and the negativity of it oh, was great. Um, oh, I, so it felt honest as a result. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, let's move on to something that, uh, in a weird way, is like a strange pseudo cousin of like a dragon infinite wealth. Um, the Persona series, while it's not like a sister series, it, a, there's a lot of DNA there shared between Yakuza Like a Dragon and Persona. And uh, the team of Persona is they're they're good. They're doing something different. They're doing something real different uh, with Metaphor Re Fantasio. Uh, so the Persona series is known for its. Uh, ridiculously amazing uh, sense of design. Uh, the design of Persona is incredible, and it looks like they're doing something completely different, but equally striking with Metaphor. Um, it looks really friggin' cool. Uh, we still don't have a tremendous amount f about it yet. We know that uh, there's going to be like social links, very similar to Persona. It should play quite a bit like Persona, but it looks really, really cool. So uh, presumably it'll also have a banging soundtrack. Yeah, no, I mean, it, it really does look great. I'm, I'm glad we're getting more and more about it. Um, yeah, I am too. It's, it's I'm just glad they're doing something different. Yeah. I think that every developer, every now and then, especially when they have like a run of hits and a, like a beloved series, doing something different can refresh them. And it, it, it's a little bit like a vacation, but it can refresh them and it can inspire new ideas. Yeah. Oh, and look like, at the date system. Idol's Day. Yeah. Does that mean it's a weekend? I'm going to assume that means it's a weekend. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, I just appreciate them going somewhere where it's like, it. it's, you know, not classical RPG exactly, but it's just, it's not, you know, modern day like they're used to. And I love that. I love that they do that. But it's it's really refreshing to see something very different from them, but still using some of the, like, really, really cool design sensibilities. Success that, right, and the successful elements that, um, everybody wants more of yeah like especially since persona 5 i mean the the ui design like not to go too far into like design and like my my design and designer background but oh my god like i know it's so i just i i never get tired of looking at this stuff like the, they're new just it you know it's company wide because the persona 3 remake is doing it too it just we're, we're so used to like basic things like a menu system being like well obviously you have to have just a a straight you know a vertical list of text on one side and this over here and there's like no what if the text was all warped and like weird and like nothing just i don't know it's just it really just mess messes with your right. expectations let's, let's make it way more landscape yeah mm. just the, the look of that and like even just the ui when you're going around the the display of the date and i don't know i just it's so i just love looking at it well, what I've always found fascinating about the uh, graphic design of Persona and the graphic design of this is logically, if you just look at it, it should just look like Photoshop vomit. Like it, 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 sh it, it's chaotic, and it, it, sh at first glance, it shouldn't make any sense as an interface, <laughs> and it works. Like the battle system screens, like, like the battle system screens. You look at it, and you're like, well, this is random as hell. Yeah, and then it's like, oh. 
No, this actually does work. Interesting. Wow, that takes a lot of talent to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Talent and experience, not just make something look good, but to make it work as well. And I, I, I see we are also getting some of the classic like SMT persona uh, gross enemy designs. Oh yeah. Mm. I guess I guess these these like teeth with cavities are not the grossest looking thing, but the other thing little, they have like a, a skull face in cavities. Well, they do, but then then they got this thing with like its four eyes and this like tongue snake with a flower and an eyeball at the end of it. So, yeah. I mean, there's nothing here as disturbing as a fungus bear. So, yeah, I actually, I the fungus bear is worse. <laughs> That's true, but that is because ugh, cordyceps personally revolted me. So, yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, one last thing just to cover, like you know, this was one of those games. Speaking of things that got announced early, you know, yeah, it was used to be called Project Re Fantasy, and it just. <gasps> Yeah. For years, it was like, huh, whatever happened with that? What is it exactly? Because um, it didn't have a name. And it's just like, here's some artwork. Um, and it, actually, I, I can't easily look back at past news articles because they're on the they're not on our current website right now. The oldest mm-hmm. news article we have right now is in late 2020 when they had to like <laughs> remind people like, yes, actually, this game still does exist. So like, it's been mm-hmm. a while I mean, Metaphor Refantasio sounds like the name of an anime version of an Assassin's Creed character. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and with that terrible joke, uh, let's move into something that I have an odd feeling that Josh will likely enjoy quite a bit that's coming out later this year. Um, it's called Mina the Hollower. So uh, Solosi wrote the blurb of this, and Solosi, I think, is uh, – he's a – a big fan of this series, and boy, I am too. Shovel Knight. Yacht Club Games, uh, their side-scrolling homage to the 8-bit side-scroller in the style of Mega Man and stuff like that, Shovel Knight. It became a sensation, a phenomenon. They released Shovel Knight, then they released three pieces of DLC that were approximately the same size as Shovel Knight, but with completely using the villains of Shovel Knight as the protagonists, uh, each one with a very different uh, attack and movement uh, system. And they're all good. Value for your money. If you love a side scroller, you can't beat Shovel Knight Treasure Trove. Holy crap! You get your money's worth of that thing. I love it. Yeah. They yep. decided we're we're gonna do something different this time, and they announced Mina the Hollower, which, based on just the way it looks, you see it and you're like, "That's Link's Awakening." <laughs> yep. And it's... nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Visually, anyway. Yeah. Visually. Well, even even if you watch the first trailer. When I saw their crowdfunding for it, it was just like you look at it, I was like, it kind of looks like they redrew Link's sprite from Link's Awakening and turned him into a mouse. It's like all the ways he moves, it's like a very authentic Game Boy looking game that just it really completely does. It, it it's Link's Awakening but you play a mouse. Um it is it also brings to mind uh Crystalis. Oh, maybe yeah. the Star uh-huh. Tropics. Like it just uh-huh. it has that look to it. Uh, because it's 8-bit, right? And, like, yeah, it looks like a Game Boy because it uses, like, a square grid. And your character is a square rather than the taller characters of those other NES games. Yeah, specifically it looks like a Game Boy Color game. Right. Yeah, yeah. And, like, I, I actually, I know people hate it, but I first played Crystalis on the Game Boy Color. So that uh, <laughs> that's why it brings that to life for me a lot. But just looking at the landscapes again, it's just like, wow, it really looks like those other just, like, great action RPGs type games from that era um so yeah i uh unfortunately this is a game i tend to kind of forget about because it's just been very quiet they don't say much about it and i didn't crowdfund mm-hmm. it so i don't get updates but uh but i am excited about it i love link's awakening uh it's one of my favorite zelda games uh, so this is absolutely if it actually comes out this year it'll be my first yacht club game i've only played like 10 minutes of shovel knight <laughs> I really hope that it's, I, I, I hope it lives up to that because Yacht Club, Shovel Knight is so good. For me. I'm excited to see what else they can do. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know if I mentioned it on a podcast, but you know, I bought Shovel Knight back when it came out or, well, I think I, I crowdfunded it. I can't remember. It's been so long mm-hmm. and I got it on the Wii U because of course that was the thing that I had at the time. Um, mm-hmm. And then never, never got around to finishing it because it was on the Wii U. Um, so actually in 2023 is finally when I said, you know what? And I, I got treasure trove. I just started over and like, I'm like, no, that's actually why I never played it either. (laughs) I bought it on the Wii U. It's, it's, it's fantastic. So like, I'm not, 
I don't want to directly compare to uh, Super Giant or anything, but like for me, like that that game, they they the like love letter to like the NES style, like they nailed it so well between that and the delivering on all their DLC, which, you know, were all originally part of the, I think all of them were part of the Kickstarter, right? It was just like, it just took a long time to build all of it. Cause they're like, they were so successful. They're like, Oh, we actually have to do all this now. Um, I mean, but for me, like based on that and their track record of the one game, um, I mean, like, I, I have faith in them on this. Like what sho- it seems to me like what shovel Knight was for like an NES style game is this is for like a GB, a game Boy color kind of game. So uh, mm-hmm. I'm I'm really looking forward to it. I have hope as well. I'm really looking forward to this title, um, and it's original, which is nice. It's an it's a brand new original IP, so it'll be exciting to see what they can do with that. Yeah. Okay, moving on to something that is definitely not a uh, new IP. In fact, it is a very old IP, and oh my god, I have, can't believe they're doing it. Uh, Nintendo is releasing a Paper Mario: The Thousand Year Door remaster. Um, yeah, I mean. The Thousand Year Door is a beloved game for so many people. Uh, people consider it to be the, frankly, uh, I mean, it has some stiff competition up against uh, Super Mario RPG, but the best Mario RPG and maybe one of the best games on the GameCube period. Um, and we're getting a remake of it, which is, pre- or I guess it's a remaster technically, but it, it, I mean, this game doesn't, it barely needs an update in terms of its uh, visuals because the Paper Mario series is deliberately minimalistic. So it's it shouldn't look dated at all. It should just be clean and fun and maybe soft. I guess not soft because it's paper. It cut up some of the, uh, trim some of the rough points around the edges. Yeah. Uh, and I think that everyone is pretty damn excited about it. I'm yeah, sure. like I've been playing Paper Mario 64 uh recently and i've actually not played thousand year door very much um it's it's kind of a blind spot for me especially for mario games um so -hmm. having played the original one on switch recently and then them announcing the next one i'm like well i guess i can play another paper mario next year Uh, so i'm pretty excited to to give it a shot yeah i mean it's it's one of the ones i miss because i'd love paper mario i just for some reason didn't pick this one up and uh just to make sure that this was still accurate, I'm I'm looking it up on eBay just just to see. And like it routinely, I mean, there's one that just sold a few days ago for sixty seven dollars with just a disc. There's not even that's, there's not even that's a, box. a pretty good deal. Yeah, <laughs> the the one in my local game shop was going for like two fifty recently. Yeah, I mean, before yeah, a, this was announced, <laughs> some of these are a lot of these are under a hundred, but some only barely. Um, except for this one that's like mint in box that sold for five hundred dollars, but. Uh, Hmm. Otherwise, it's you know not the cheapest game to like pick up. I mean, for a secondhand price, uh, you know that that's up there. So I'm like, I'm glad they're doing this because I I want to play it and I just never got around to it. But I'm not going to pay that much for it. My story is exactly the same as Mike's. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, there's a lot of GameCube games that are still stuck on the GameCube. Mm-hmm. And yeah, worth a lot of money because they're stuck on the GameCube. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully this is just well it's not the beginning because we got metroid prime also but uh and baton kaitos also yeah but right maybe maybe this year was the start and they'll just keep them coming hopefully yeah the gamecube is interesting because i would much rather be stuck on the wii u than the gamecube because anything that was stuck on the wii u eventually <laughs> got shoveled shuffled over to the switch so at least the good stuff um except the wind waker and twilight princess <laughs> Yeah, you're not wrong. Xenoblade but a lot Chronicles of the- Cross. And, and Xenoblade, yeah. <laughs> Only those three, though. I mean, a lot of other things. There. There's still time. Nintendo yes. has more time to uh, to continue to shovel over games that were missed on their previous console onto the new one. Well, the quote-unquote new one. Yeah. Um, speaking of remakes, let's talk about Persona 3 Reload. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, uh, they're finally doing something different than Persona 5 unfortunately it's persona 3 again um well actually that's not unfortunate it's just like wow they it's a classic wow they cannot count to six can they no but it looks so nice it really does yeah i mean this is one of my most anticipated games of the year like i've wanted to play persona 3 for so long and i'm like uh, like do i play fez do i play p3p i feel like both of them have their positives and negatives and then, like, I saw this. I was like, nope, never mind. I know my answer because um, it's the <laughs> only Persona game that I want to play, at least, because mm-hmm. I, I, I don't want to play Persona 1 uh, that I have not played. Um, and I really 
I, I anywhere from like really like to absolutely adore Innocence in um, the Persona games. And so I will be on this like white on rice. Like I am so excited uh-huh. um, for this game. Um, and yeah, I, I think it looks fantastic too. Um, and I, it, everybody tells me it's like the blend between like what Persona was in one and two yep. and two I'm excited for and what Persona became. And like, like that, that's, that's talk. That's, that's speaking my language right there. Yeah. And it's, an amazing transition to be honest like i i mm-hmm. like it a lot and also i think it's it's old enough just old enough where i'm not exactly mad that that they're updating it <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. yeah okay uh we've really got a we've really got a motor through from here oh we've really um, got a motor through because of what's coming up next oh sh- that's funny. Um, <laughs> wow, let's just skip that. I one. thought for sure that was the joke. Yeah. <laughs> no, I was actually, no, I wasn't even looking. I wasn't looking at what came next. I was like, "Oh crap, we're running really short on time. We really got to motor through." Well, that's a perfect excuse then. Um, okay. Um, oh, well, screw it. I was going to cut all this, but that's actually pretty funny. So let's just keep it. Um, so Saga Emerald Beyond. I'm beyond caring. Does anyone else want to talk about this? I. Uh, you know what? It, it's one of those. It's one of those series that it really has its fans like it it's never i've only played saga frontier it's the only one i've played um i i have heard and think uh scarlet grace looks pretty nice and this is a follow-up to that um Mm -hmm. you know i i'm not saying it's going to win you over jono but you know it's i mean jono's not going to play i would be stunned (laughs) (laughs) um i think it looks great scarlet grace i think looked great I haven't played a saga game since also frontier. I played legend one and two. Uh, I will not be playing this, but I hope it's good. <laughs> I hope it's good too. Me too. Uh, top perspective characters uh, are the ones that are um, feature writer described as the sapphic pair of police officers hunting down a suspected assassin. That's, that's a story I'm interested in. Yeah, I mean, the, the characters are very, very interesting to me. Sounds like a way better game, actually. <laughs> Um, yeah, the characters are what really what makes Saga. Okay, I, I will drop my my slightly over <laughs> overplayed hatred of the Saga series for a moment and say that I am glad that Square Enix is continuing to develop this series as it's one of their long running series. And uh, my experience playing the Saga series has taught me that this is not the series for me. And I will not review another Saga game because I have an odd feeling that it would not be a positive review, even if it was a great example of a Saga game. Um, Yeah, uh, clearly I am not excited about this, but I know a lot of people are. So good for them. I hope they have a great time here. Yeah. Um, Okay. Uh, As a transition, I will say I would rather be buried in sand than play Saga Emerald Beyond. And that is a possibility in the game Sandland. Um, So this is a fascinating looking game kind of came out of nowhere uh people are going to recognize the uh how can i put this it has a very recognizable hmm. uh artistic design uh-huh, behind it yep. yeah uh does this is i'm actually it's it's a this is action rpg right it's not a it's not a jrpg i believe it's action rpg yeah that's it what it also I has like tank shooter elements it looks like that is an interesting yeah it does have like tank shooter elements it looks like i mean forgot to say it looks like dragon quest or dragon ball or Chrono Trigger, like it's it, it is what it looks like, but I mean it's a damn cool art style. So fingers crossed that it's good. It's based on a, the anime Sand Land. So uh, if anyone wants to get caught up before they play it, they have that option. And then is anyone excited about this? I think it looks really cool. Like I didn't, you know, I don't know, I don't follow like Toriyama stuff outside. You know, I don't follow Dragon Ball either. Yeah. But, you know, I know of it. I didn't oh, know Akira Toriyama. Yes, I, I, I should have probably mentioned that. Yes, Akira Toriyama was yeah. the. Uh, um, or was the artist behind so, it? So, like, I personally didn't know of it, but like the fact that this is a manga from or a story from like two thousand, like being turned mm-hmm. into a game 23, 24 years later. Um, so, I like I can see why one of the reasons people were really excited about it because it's like, mm-hmm. yeah, until you I, said I guess there it was, was really good. Yeah, until you said there was a manga or something, I just assumed this was a new IP and that they got Toriyama to do the art. <laughs> so, no, looks neat. I gotta say, from what I've seen, I. I'm really enjoying seeing his style like updated to kind of modern game graphics between like Dragon Quest 11 and this. Yeah. Like, I, I think I, you would think his his art style would like have really like I think it worked on like older consoles, but I think it's really, really working on like modern stuff. Like I think they've really made that work in like 
in a 3D setting. Because like if you obviously if you did it like cell shaded, but like you could do it. But I don't know. I don't know. Like, again, I'm talking about just visuals here, but I, I think it's fun to look at and I hope it does well because it looks really interesting and it's just nice seeing seeing something new and different. Um. OK, let's move on now to uh, is it called Sheeran the Wanderer, the mystery dungeon of Serpent Coil, Serpent Coil Island? Um, I do not know what this game is. I'm not even going to pretend that I know what this game is. I'm looking at screenshots of it right now. It looks like an early era PlayStation 1 game. Uh, sh- and that's not a bad thing. sheeran has been around a long time. It just very few of them have ever come out here. It's Spike Chunsoft. I know that. Yeah, mm-hmm. but like they... It, oh, I wish I, I I looked this up to confirm. So if I'm wrong, then I'm sure someone will correct me. But as far as I know that they started, the that's where the Mystery Dungeon like style of game mm. and mystery dungeon series began before that was my like spin-offs, spin-offs like chocobo's mysterious dungeon and lots of others but you know yeah. that's that is the originator of it you know what i'm gonna take that back it doesn't look like a playstation game it looks like a nintendo 64 game <laughs> the new Good. one does and there's a difference <laughs> there's a difference i'm not just talking about in terms of 32 versus 64 bit like it's the look of it really does remind me of a Nintendo 64 game. Aww. I think you need to play an N64 game again. Uh, okay, it's not yes, quite clearly there, it's a little, it's yeah. a little bit more advanced. It, but like in terms of the character polygon design, graphics. Yeah, there, there's a certain chunkiness that I associate with 64 over PlayStation, so I, I can kind of see it. Yeah, it, I would actually. You want to know what? That's a perfect way to describe it. Nintendo 64 is chunky, whereas PlayStation is sharp. Yeah. <laughs> chunky polygons versus sharp polygons. Yeah. That's the chunky difference. Chunky polygons with blurry textures versus yeah. sharp polygons with sharp textures. Well, I'm planning to give this one a shot. Uh, I've been wanting to try one of them for a long time. So they're, mm. they're putting it on my Switch where it's really convenient to play. So I'll probably give it a shot. Yeah. And I'm happy... Happy for everyone who's been waiting since like what 2015. Yeah, it's uh, it came out. Well, I mean, this one is coming out in Japan in uh, January, and it's being followed up with. I think it's coming out in February. Okay. So, yeah, it, like you said, it's a long running. It's long running uh, series, so it has some history behind it. It'd be nice if it could get a little bit of traction. It looks cool. It just I'm just not really. I, I don't really know anything about it. Mm-hmm. Um, moving on now to something else that I know nothing about. But, oh my god, the graphic style is... This is crazy. So, uh, folks out there might be familiar with the game Moon Remix RPG Adventure. Uh, It was a PlayStation kind of... It was an anti-RPG, I believe, that was released and it was never localized officially. And then it got a official... It was a cult classic and it got an official localization, like, last year? Or was the year before that? One one of those. twenty Like, 22 years after its release, yeah. Yeah, so this seems to be uh, almost a spiritual successor. Uh, it's it's some of the some of the same people behind uh, Moon, and it seems to be evoking much of the same feel and look. And I suspect it's going to be a an experience, something to talk about. Yeah, I really want to play this in Moon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's. You know, games like this coming to Retro Encounter in January. Yeah, <laughs> if they need another person, I won't do it. You're, you're you're more than welcome. <laughs> oh, there we go. Now you've said it on air. Uh oh. N- not to you know, not to like overblow this or anything, but like games like this, I think are which it's just one of those. It makes it a really interesting time just in video games, like. Yeah. Moon Moon was one of those things. You know, it appeared in one of our features five years ago. Uh, in like a, you know, things that never got localized kind of thing. And, you know, Mm -hmm. it was something that Rob Fenner wrote about. And this is like, if, if you have read RPG Fen for a while, or, you know, Rob Fenner, this is a, (laughs) this is a Fenner game, you know, like he Mm. loves this like weird stuff like this. And like, I've always, and I appreciate that he, he would introduce us, me and us to like stuff I'd never heard about. And, uh, just the idea of this like weird little game by a developer that like has not existed for a long time. The original devs are, you know, the original company, like it's long gone. Um, it's just like, it was always just, well, that that's it. You know, this game came out in Japan we'll never get it. It's a cool idea. And the idea that it actually came out here by like, you know, uh, some people like coming together and be like, you know what, why don't we release this here? Uh, thanks mm-hmm. to Toby Fox. If you've never read that story, uh thanks toby (laughs) because toby fox was like partially inspired by moon and somehow knows like one of the people here and was like hey you should you should make moon happen 
I don't know. It's a bizarre story. So like the the fact that that came out and now they're like they're doing this other game and like and they're doing more games in that right weird... and that is following so closely on the heels of Moon finally coming here. It's just really neat. Yeah, it's really cool to see. So I hope it does wh- whatever it is. Uh, I hope it does well because it looks fascinating. I've always maintained that the graphic style of these games it looks it looks like if you're having a dream and you're playing an RPG on a TV in the dream, yeah. that's what this game uh-huh. looks like. Yep. That's a good way it of putting it. It doesn't look dreamlike. It, it almost looks like, it looks like a jumble of things that don't quite fit <laughs> together, like an impressionistic version of what graphics look yep. like. And that, I mean, and because of that, it creates this incredibly uh, fascinating uh, graphic style, which uh, apparently is very much reflected in the gameplay. So I think that this is going to be uh, a, I think I don't know if it'll be a massive hit. I do think it should be something that we are talking about a lot next year. Mm-hmm. I hope we're talking about it a lot next year. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, hey, Zach, want to take the next one? <laughs> I mean, I could talk about Suikoden. Uh, I, I bet, I, you know, to keep it short, have you played Suikoden 1 and 2? They're really good, especially 2. They're going to make it and make it look prettier, and they're going to fix the localization, which is 100% the only real problem with those games. <laughs> and they're coming out this year. You should play them. They're awesome. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Basically sums up everything we need to say about this. Um, Yeah, this is going to be awesome. Again, if you're looking for a value in your games, the, you can't beat the value here uh, because they're two amazing RPGs and they're going to look better than ever. And you're going to have, this would be a good, is it, do we know yet whether or not this is coming out before or after? (laughs) Uh, I, I actually don't know that it has a specific release date, but I've always speculated that it would be like, a month after Uden Chronicle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that seems about right. Um, I gotta gotta mop up. Um, Do we know who's actually developing this? I mean, is it actually an in-house Konami team? Because I don't know if they still have those. Uh, we haven't heard anything differently as far as okay. I'm aware. I don't know. It's... That is my concern, actually. About this. <laughs> well, no, That's I mean, fair. I'm not. I'm really not concerned because, like, the collections they've been putting out, the Ninja Turtles and the Castlevania ones, have been great. So, I mm. mean, like, they they actually. I know Konami's been in a weird place and we always make fun of them. It's like, ha pachinko machines. No, but I keep, uh, I keep hearing from you. Like they put so much care and effort into their collection. Like recently, like recently they're like, yeah. they're repackaging th- these things, but not in a cheap collection. Like, Hey, let's just make some money. Like they they really put the effort in. So I agree with you. I agree with you, but they rarely do remasters. They do collections, but these True. seem to be remasters of the original with mm-hmm. redone backgrounds, widescreen. Like it's it there's a lot of work that needs to be done here to improve the visuals of these games. Um yeah. Well, not that much because the games look great as is, but you know what I mean. I do. But I mean, you know, the, the, to give them credit, you know, they're including I think the original graphics and the original music too, right? As options. So I'm like mm. it's one of those things like I don't you know, me as a fingers crossed. As a designer or a website like when you change things people don't like it Um, a lot of people do and a lot of people don't like when we switched over the site in 2020 like so many people were like oh can you can you change it back we're like no that's not how this that's not how it works like it's it's built on a different that we can't just make it work the same way also there are things that are better um Mm -hmm. so like uh you know i don't i don't want to go too far down the uh the Apple St- old Steve Jobs route of like now we're gonna we're gonna tell you what you want kind of thing, but like it's actually really hard and not always the best idea to say to try to please both sides of it. But whatever, if they can do it, if they can do all this new stuff and say, well, if you don't like it, you can still play it the original way, but on your current consoles, well then that's fantastic. Yeah. Like you can't, there's no way to complain about that if you get it both ways with a better localization. Like I, I don't see how it can't be can't be good fingers crossed um we're moving on now to unicorn overlord which is the most suggestive title i've ever heard of a video game in my life (laughs) am i the only one that that, even though i know it's overlord always wants to read unicorn overload but that's an even more suggestive title (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I, I I will admit that at least six times during this conversation, as I've been looking through this list, I've read Overload. Okay, all right. Well, so yeah, you're not alone, Mike. Thank you. Well, also like the the fonts they have going on. Yeah, the fonts are like really. Uh, someone someone argued with me that it's not the God of War font, but it's the God of War font, or at least something similar. Like it's a really like that logo is like really trying hard. Uh, but whatever, it's vanillaware. It's 
fantastic looking. It, I don't, uh, it's another developer, like for me, like, I don't see how they could really not do well. So, yeah, I know. And I mean, you look at it, you look at some of the screenshots of it and uh, yeah, you, uh, it seems like the kind of game where you want to fight it out. Yeah, that's right. (laughs) Um, Uh, This is like my moment here. Uh, This is my most anticipated (laughs) game of the end of the decade. Like, um, um, it's the, uh, Spiritual successor to Ogre Battle. There we go. Coming from something that's not a little indie developer. Mm -hmm. Uh, It also has a stupid name, just like Ogre Battle does. There you go. (laughs) Although Ogre Battles is based on a Queen song. I haven't checked if this one is named after a Queen song. (laughs) Somehow I doubt it. Yeah, like they they were a bit dramatic with it and reframed it as something like the rebirth of the tactical RPG. Um, But I'll take it. Uh, I'm extremely excited about somebody finally picking up the ogre battle gameplay. Um, yeah. you know, we were talking about saga a bit ago and how it's really cool that square is willing to keep it alive, even though it's kind of a niche thing. Um, I'm glad they keep it alive because it gives me hope that eventually they'll get around to remastering the game. I actually want them to remaster. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but in the meantime, Vanillaware taking the reins and making something completely gorgeous. Uh, I, I will take it'll do uh, so yeah this will be absolutely takes precedence over everything else for me uh nice. come march mm-hmm. um, yeah just going to liberate your switch <laughs> <laughs> i'm just i'm happy to see i mean not that it's such a novel thing now but like it is a little bit um just more and more emphasis on strategy rpgs Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I know last year we had stuff like, well, I don't know if people really end up liking the deal field chronicle, but whatever, they still made an SRPG yeah. and no one expected it. Yeah. You know, right. there the was, effort was made. there was a, you know, there was a time there when we would do games of the year and like E3 you know, stuff. And, you know, we always did things you with know, genres and sometimes we did not have anything for uh, srpg there was just nothing or maybe maybe uh-huh. it was like what are the nominees like well a design a disguise game came out this year and right. that was it and fire emblem <laughs> yeah. yeah but we'll be for that though yeah like once fire emblem came back like that helped too but there was some time where we're just like there's just no one's making these things anymore so it's really mm-hmm. cool seeing more and more of that and i think between fire emblem being a major success again and uh you know now vanilla is getting into it i think we're just going to keep seeing more not to mention like how many indie SRPGs there are now. Yeah, I really mm-hmm. do think uh as much as I'm not like the biggest Fire Emblem fan, I think we pretty much have intelligent systems to thank for bringing back strategy RPGs, mm-hmm. making them yeah. a big mm-hmm. deal again to the point that yeah, like I never got around to playing Dio Field Chronicle past the demo, but the demo was neat. Uh you know, I'll buy it on sale someday and play through it. Yeah. Uh and you know, getting Tactics Ogre back and where is mm-hmm. Final Fantasy Tactics? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, right. But it's just like w- the idea that we can get any of this now would have seemed impossible five years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I'm really, really excited. This is one. Of, this is one of my favorite genres, obviously. Uh, and uh, seeing my favorite adaptation of the genre coming from one of the most celebrated developers uh, is incredible. Um, was was anyone else giggling at the uh, fight it out? Why? What? What? My horrible joke? Yeah, I, oh. I got it. <laughs> I missed I, it. I've been giggling about it since I made it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. And so let's uh, find out just how how good Unicorn Overlord is going to be. Okay. All right. Yes, I'm, I'm, I gotcha, tried to put as many gotcha. as many in jokes into this one as possible. <laughs> well, moving on now to uh, the last three games on the list. Uh, first up is. Wow, this is interesting. Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2. Now, first off, that is quite a title. Uh, and the reason for it is because uh, Vampire uh, the Masquerade Bloodlines was a game that was released, God, decades ago. Uh, it was, God, uh, 2004. Uh, and it was a, it was a critical, uh, it, did, it did not do well. It did very, very poorly. Um, but it did develop into a bit of a cult favorite. Um, and they announced a few years ago that there was going to be a sequel to Bloodlines, Bloodlines 2. And this thing has been in development hell for a long time. Uh, some developers were assigned to it and they left and then others left. And finally, finally, uh, recently it was announced that the developer, the Chinese Room, 
uh, it, it took over development of Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2, and that caught my attention. Uh, the reason why is because they are generally known as uh, the pioneers of walking simulators. They were the developer. Their, their very first major game was Dear Esther, which was like the, the prototypical walking simulator. Uh, and they have also done Everyone's Gone to the Rapture. Uh, they have a game coming out in a few months or next year, which I'm actually kind of excited about called Still Wakes the Deep, which looks like a bit of a horror walking simulator very much in line. But this is going to be an RPG. So this is like something they really haven't done too much with. Uh, they do know horror. They've done, uh, they've made an amnesia game, a machine for pigs, but I'm, I'm pretty excited about uh, seeing what they do with this. Uh, not something I'm super excited about. Like, it's not like I'm okay. I got to play this game, but it is something as someone who recently played dear Esther uh, for the first time and was like, Oh, I totally see where, how this developed into the walking sim genre. Uh, I'm kind of curious to see what the Chinese room does with it. And plus, it's a very old IP, and I'd like to see old IPs get resurrected by uh, people who were inspired by the original, and it seems like that's what's happening here. Um, has anyone played Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines? I have not. You know, for no. for a long time, I was, I, even though I didn't play the original, I was very worried about this game because of the development problems and when when you talk about development problems, when you like remove key people from the team and change developers, and like, boy, this this does mm -hmm. not bode well. But you know, like you said, like they they landed on someone who is known for good games, so I, I hope it works out for him. It's just it's such an unknown kind of thing. Like it, it's mm -hmm. actually like we talked about before with Guerrilla Games going from Killzone to Horizon and some other ones. I'm like it could go really well or just be who knows. So. I hope it does well for them because I think I feel like people are very really want this sequel. So I hope it works out. I I cannot believe they're not changing the title to something a little bit better than Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2. Oh my God, that is quite a title. Yeah, right. Um, well, talking about another two, but one that I'm considerably more excited about is The Wolf Among Us 2. Uh, this is another game that rose from the dead because The Wolf Among Us was a Telltale Games uh, adaptation of Fables, the comic book. Uh, and it was a wonderful uh, kind of noirish mystery set in a fairy tale world with where the characters from fairy tales exist in modern day uh, New York City. Uh, and I just I just love it. Hillary and I, we were on a podcast together. Uh, oh, my God. Was it last year? Yes, it was. Mm -hmm. um, it was our autumn of uh, adventure. Time flies. Um, and. Uh, because the game did very, very well, and Telltale uh, announced a sequel to it. So it was going to be The Wolf Among Us 2. It was announced in 2017, and then, of course, Telltale ran into a bit of a spot of trouble, uh, to put it mildly. <laughs> and since then, the game has apparently been constantly under development, which I don't buy. But it's now officially coming out uh, next year, and it is going to be a direct sequel to the original, still starring Bigby Wolf. Uh, and it, it should be in the, the, the classic telltale design, uh, with lots of choices and, uh, being able to develop your own story. Uh, the trailer that got released a long time ago now, not a long time ago, was it last year? Uh, it looked like, it looked like Bigby Wolf was fighting against, uh, the gang from the Wizard of Oz. So nice. Yeah. It looks like it's remaining true to the original and Hill, I know you're excited for it. Mm -hmm. Wait, did they confirm next year release? I think they did. Oh, okay. Last I saw was just, you know, the the layoffs like th three months ago at Telltale, but they're like, yeah, it's still happening. If they, I mean, I'm, I'm not pretty, I'm just, if they did, then that's great. I thought it was just like, uh, 20, I thought 2024 was going to be optimistic given Telltale's issues uh, again. Yeah. Uh, I didn't think so. I know it was pushed. Yeah. Hang on, 2024 pushed to next year to, fit, to avoid crunch. Yeah, so it's, they're avoiding crunch, but the game has been released. Okay, the okay. game is apparently far enough along that it should be released this year. Well, that's okay. great then. All right. I hope it is I didn't, anyway. I didn't read that one, so that's yeah. good. Uh, it, that, I think it looks great. That means I've got some comics to read. <laughs> yeah. Uh, perhaps avoid the... They, they rec He recently uh, revived the series uh, with a 12-issue miniseries. It's fine. Uh, it's, it's fine. Fables Law... Fables lost its way about three quarters of the way through, I feel. Um, still okay, but like up to that point, it was brilliant. But then it, 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 it happens sometimes. Let's talk about the last All game, right. which is <laughs> Yeast 10 Nordics. I've never played a Yeast game. I played a couple. Hillary's played a couple. Yep. Um, I know it's pronounced Yeast. Yes. Well, you're on your way then. Yeast. Um, 
I think this one looks looks really cool. Um, it, it looks like a nice uh, update, I guess, from nine. I don't know. I mean, I unlike the Trails games, I appreciate that they're standalone. Uh, it looks very nice, um, even though it hasn't actually been confirmed for coming out here. It's obvious that it will. It's just a matter of time. So mm-hmm. I, I don't I, think it's unrealistic to say it's going to come out next year. Oh, I do. I, I really don't think it's a 2024 game. No, it would not shock I mean, me if we didn't get it till the end of like 2025 or later. It's already out in Japan. <laughs> yeah, I know. They just, I mean, Falcom games, even the Trail series, is so hit and miss on how fast are they going to localize it for us? And I'm just like, they've got all these trail <laughs> games lined up. That's are they true. really going to mm-hmm. just cram East in here somewhere? So, I mean, but like tra- trails is like so much of a bigger task to localize. Yeah, that is true. Like uh, I feel like it's probably reasonable. Like I'd love mm-hmm. for it to come out. Like East is another one of my favorite series. Um, like I, I've played the majority of them. Um, but yeah, I just I was not really expecting it. Didn't really have it on my radar for next year. <laughs> just figured it'd be <laughs> way later. You might you might be onto something. No, you might be onto something. I was looking at. Uh, E's nine. Uh, E's nine came out in September <laughs> yeah. 2019 and was localized early 2021. So, Both. yeah, <laughs> it could be late next year. Cool. At the moment, at the moment, my release schedule for the end of next year is totally blank. So <laughs> they could fit it right. Let's, there. let's aim for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What about Silk Song? When Silk Song gets <laughs> shadow dropped at next November. Yeah, Silk Song, everyone's favorite. We'll, we'll be talking about this in a second, but yeah. Yeah, I, I generally think that East uh, kind of just gets better over time. There's not a lot of game series I think that of where like every new game is just better than the one before it. Uh, but I, I generally feel that way about East. Uh, like I think nine is the best one they've made. So, and I thought eight was the best before that. So, I kind of feel like I'm excited. I think it'll be a really good time. Cool. Um. All right. Well, that's the end of our list. But just before we go uh, and move into some uh, other things briefly, I mean, we are an RPG and adventure game focused site, but I wanted to ask if anyone has any uh, games that are coming out in 2024 that aren't on this list that you'd be uh, you, you just want to mention that you're really pumped for. Silk Song is definitely coming out in 2024. <laughs> <at> the end. <sighs> Zach, 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 Zach. It's uh, it. It's never going to happen. It's never going to happen. It's it's just not. Uh, let me put it this way. I firmly believe that Hollow Knight 2 will be released before Silk Song is ever released. <laughs> you, you're doing exactly what we talked about earlier. You're trying to like downplay it. So you're still going to Silk be- Song when? Silk Song when? Yeah. I, I'm the per, I'm the person who's in the Nintendo Direct comments just saying Silk Song when over and over again with fun emojis. Oh, I always <laughs> hide that chat, so I have never seen you, I've never seen you do it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll see. If it is, I would be very excited for it. I have no faith. I firmly think they'll shadow drop it. I honestly do. I could see them doing but it. But I would be very excited if they just shadow drop it in a direct. That would be hilariously funny to me. Um don't even do it as the last game. Just do it in the middle of it. Hey, Silk Song is available now. Moving yep. on. Yeah. Foam Stars 2. <laughs> <laughs> the only way they could possibly break more brains by doing that is they followed up the announcement of a shadow drop of Silk Song with a shadow drop of Mother 3. Oh, my God. oh goodness. Oh, that would be that That's would be the uh, most anticipated 2024 game now. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> um, anybody else? Um, so... Uh, we, there's a game that just got announced two weeks ago that didn't make the list, probably because it was just announced two weeks ago. Uh, Visions of Mana. Yes. Yes. Comes out next year. Um, so it, it might be on the final list. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like we all we got one trailer. I haven't looked in a deep dive into it or anything, but getting a new, yep. a brand new Mana game. Thing, things are still in progress, by the way. With the, that, by the time you listen to this, this will be the. Feature will be posted, but obviously things are in motion. I mean, it's the first new game, new, okay, new console, whatever, non-mobile game, I guess, in what, 15 years in the series? Yeah, it's the first one that counts. It's, Depending on if you count handheld. Yeah. And, I was going to say, like, yeah. Heroes of Mana was the last one, wasn't it? I, I don't the know. I just, I think, I think they said 15 years. So I'm like, that's, I mean, that sounds right. It's been a long time. And I don't know. The I was very happy about the imagery. I saw it felt very, like, classic mana to me so yeah i mean if it's if it's on par with the trials remake i mean i think they're uh i think they they know what they're doing with the the game so yeah i mean if it's half as good as the trials remake (laughs) i'll be thrilled 
I imagine that's where they're going to pick up yeah. from uh, in terms of where they're taking mm-hmm. it. It looks fantastic. Yeah, so uh, yep. a not RPG that's definitely not going to be on the list. Um, they're the new Prince of Persia game, The Lost Crown. It's Ooh, another Metroidvania. Yeah, it's coming out early next year. Yeah, very yeah, early good. next year. Uh, I was uh, expecting this to just flop in the end, and it might still just flop in the end, but so far the previews have been pretty good. So we'll see <laughs> if they stick the landing or if they're just really nice trailers. <laughs> well, fingers crossed. Um does anyone else have any? The Stardew Valley 1.6 patch. <laughs> Yay! Uh, I mean, I would I would pick his next game, but like, there's that could be years away, so I'm not going to pick. Yeah, that Silk one. Song will get released before his next uh, game. I, yes, actually, probably. <laughs> um, there, I did. A, Although it'd be really funny if it wasn't. <laughs> I uh, I did have one. What the heck was it? I just I was just looking at it. Uh, well, Crypt Master. Crypt Master looks like a lot of fun. I think that's Hillary's thing. <laughs> it's my mm-hmm. thing. Well, you were going to mention it. Uh, Wh- Witchbrook is kind of one, kind of like a side thing that, like, uh, who knows? That that could be years away, but it's a chucklefish game. But it's like a life sim RPG. Kind of looks mm-hmm. like a, a Stardew visual, but like in an isometric perspective. And you're like a witch, and it looks adorable. I but, I want some good witchy games. Yeah, and actually, one of my one of my picks was going to be Loose Leaf because I. I mean, I've been playing Kit Fox's stuff like all the way back to Moon Hunters. Uh, so I'm excited to see what they do with that. Loose Life looks really cute. Yeah, it yeah. looks adorable. So that's one for me. Also, there were a bunch of kind of bizarre and fun typing related games at Day of the Devs this year where you can do a lot of fun things with combat by changing the words, changing letters in the words yeah. to figure out your way through combat and through puzzles. Um, so yeah, Crypt mm-hmm. Master was one of those. Uh, Crypt Master is the, the, the cool, like black and white looking one, and then you have Lexi Man. Lexi which Man, yes, has a vaguely like you know Undertale ish look to it. It looks interesting mm-hmm. too. But they both look like a lot of fun. So hmm. those are two. I think I'd also mention Dustborn. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't know if that's happening next year, but it's been a while, so like hopefully it's getting there. Dustborn looks we'll great. We'll see. Yeah, I'd like to mention just a few games, uh, real quick. Uh, one of them being. Uh, Sam and Max, The Devil's Playground <gasps> Remaster is apparently coming out this Ooh. year. Uh, speaking of Telltale Games, Resurrected. Uh, yeah, I can't remember. Blue something? Who got the rights? Somebody, a bunch of developers, Skunk Ape Games, uh, got the rights to the Telltale Sam and Max games, and they've been remastering them since. They're terrific. Like, all three of them are just terrific. Uh, very much in style with the classic LucasArts adventure game, uh, Sam and Max Hit the Road. Uh, and they're releasing the uh, the third one this year, and it's completely remastered, and I'm, I'm pretty excited to play it again because it's been many, many years since I played it. Um, so I'm excited about that. Uh, a game I'm really freaking excited about is, uh, this was just announced at the Game Awards, which was The Rise of the Golden Idol. Who knows if we're getting this in 2024? But it is going to be the sequel to uh, The Case of the Golden Idol, which was <laughs> one of my favorite games i've ever played which i firmly believe that hillary you and mike should be playing over christmas i think you both just lose your i think you'd love it if you played it together yeah i'm excited when we finally get the chance to to play it and i was saving that one for you because i i knew you'd be super excited uh, amanda and i played through the entire thing not including the dlc cases we're doing that over the uh we play through the entire thing and it's uh was six hours so it's not a ridiculous time way a time ask but it's so good. It's so good. And the sequel's coming out, apparently. Uh, that's going to be taking place in the 1970s. I'm really excited about that. Uh, Shanti Advanced Risky Revolution is so cool. So uh, Way Forward uh, was developing a sequel to Shanti, uh, which was released in 2001 or 2002. I can't remember which. Uh, they were developing a sequel for the Game Boy Advance. And uh, they built more than half of the game. And then it just development hell happened other games took precedence and they just stopped development on it and eventually years later they released shanti risky's revenge which was their follow-up um yeah i I don't know why but way forward uh took everything that they had from uh shanti advance risky revolution and they decided to finish the game so it's going to be a brand new game boy advance game uh finished with the game boy advanced hardware in mind and limited run games is going to be releasing a cartridge uh for it uh, for uh, Shanti Advance, so they're they're completing a game that they stopped development in in er- the early two thousands, which I think is really cool. That's so cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I've I, I've been enjoying seeing them talk about it on the different mm-hmm. game shows. Yes, and I do want to end this on a slightly negative note in a game that I 
and excited to see what happens to it is Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League because there have been unprecedented leaks about this game the last few weeks. Um, I say unprecedented before the whole Insomniac thing happened, but uh, like the entire story details, everything have been getting released about this game. And I don't know what's going to happen with this game. I think it's going to be one of the, I think it's going to be one of the stories of next year is what happens to Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. Um, it's being released in February, so we don't have long to wait. I think it might, I think it might just end up being the train wreck we all think it's going to be. And if it is, I think the fallout is going to be infinitely more entertaining than the game itself. And I'm really excited to see what happens because I feel like the success or failure of this game is going to have a tremendous impact on the nature of the industry moving forward with it's like the whole, the, the massive uh, controversy with the live service elements and things like this in this game. Uh, So I think this is going to have the most influence on what happens after 2024. I don't want to play it, which is a tragedy because it's rock steady and it's technically a sequel to the Arkham series. But uh, I guess we'll see. I've read some of the leaks and I'm furious. Mm. So I can only imagine how other people will feel. Anyway, those are the games of 2024 that we are vastly, for the most part, looking forward to. Um, And I can guarantee that you will read about almost all of them here at RPG Fan. Uh, If you're looking for a way to support us here at RPG Fan, we have a store. You can find it at www.rpgfan.com slash shop. And we still have, for a couple of more days anyway after this releases, we still have all of our 25th anniversary merchandise. But that's not all. We have a a big thing. Actually, probably one of the biggest things RPG Fan has ever done. I'm going to throw it over to Mike to tell you about that. Oh, what, what is it? What, what's the what's the project? It's the baby onesie. That that, that little <laughs> oh yeah that that thing I was I've been working on for for ten months. That thing, that little thing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So I, we're definitely gonna be pushing this a lot on the on the podcast. So uh, uh, forgive me for getting into this a lot here, but uh, yeah, we released our first book. I say first because of course I'm already hoping we can do more, but. Um, for several years, we've been posting like many versions of our reviews on Instagram. We call them review cards. So it basically just summarizes the reviews. You get the score, the pros and cons, like a, ver- a bite-sized version of our reviews. Although we always encourage people to read the whole review. Um, and the, they've been really popular. And they've been so popular that uh, Hyperplay RPG, who makes like uh, RPG zines and some other, um, you know, fun little books, like they did a an English translation, like a printed English version of Xenogear's Perfect Works, uh, which is a really neat pr- fan project. Um, but they approached us and said, hey, you know, those cards are cool. Have you ever thought about making a book out of them? And I said, not until this moment, I didn't. Um, <laughs> and then and then most of the year was spent uh, between other site projects working on this thing. And now the book is available. So it's it's almost 300 pages of review cards um, one over a hundred of them are new for the book. Um, so there's a lot of things that you may have seen on Instagram, but there's also several things in here you've never seen. Um, and it's just, it's been a really, really satisfying project to put together. And so far the reception has been great. So it is, well, it really, it, it really depends on when you're ordering it and the exchange rate because hyperplay is a UK based company, but, um, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's, 40 something pounds uh the book so uh whatever that translates to it's not a bad deal for the the size you know that includes ship yeah. it includes shipping um anyway point is i really would encourage you to go to rpgfan.com slash shop uh you can get to our merch shop like Jono talked about but we have a new link up for the book take a look at it we have a link to um Actually, can we put the link in the show notes for this one too? For like the post, they will be there. Like the like they will absolutely the post because I also wrote a post with some photos of the book, yep. and uh, it's just it's been really satisfying. They'll be in there uh, seeing it. Um, I think it's beautiful. I'm gonna I as I always do have to give a shout out to Stephanie because Stephanie came up with the review card concept to begin with, um, and of course she created some original cover art for the book and. As much work as I put into this and several other people put into it, making the reviews and proofreading, um, the first impression, I mean, like it or not, the first impression of a book is going to be the cover. And this cover is fantastic. So it, it really gives you a clue of what's inside there. So uh, I don't know. 
I'm very proud of it. So please check it out. Uh, I think you will like it. And if it does well, uh, we are, you know, hopefully we'll do more volumes in the future. Well, yeah, Mike, the book is stunning. Like the book is incredible. I haven't, I got an advanced copy of it. I just love it. I just love it so much. It's so cool. Uh, it's, it's really nice seeing, especially it's as someone who grew up, uh, reading game magazines and eagerly awaiting getting my copy of game players every single month in the mail, seeing my name in print beside a review does give me a certain, uh, a certain kick. And I just love that feeling. It's, it's a really cool book. I highly recommend that everyone check it out because there are some really great games and some really great reviews in it as well. Yep. I haven't, I haven't had. Uh, such a thrill seeing RPG fan in print since we got reviewed in an issue of Tokyo Pop like 20 something years ago. <laughs> that's that's a deep cut. Right? <laughs> nope. I, I still have, do I have the, I can't remember if I have the magazine or a scan, but yes, we got re- re- reviewed. They re- reviewed websites and we were, we were in there. If you have a scan of that, you should put it up as a, like on the last day of the yeah. year for the last thing for the anniversary. <laughs> yeah. All I right, would I'll, love to see that. Um, yeah. Let me <laughs> yeah, go for it. That'd be, that'd be pretty amazing. Um, well, uh, that's a way you can support the site. But if you want to support us here at Random Encounter, you can do so by checking out some of our past episodes. Like two weeks ago, we had an episode that was immediately following the Game Awards. We talked about all of the stories of the Game Awards. It was a gaming's biggest night. And boy, did we have a big episode about it. But that is not the only podcast we have here at RPG Fan. We also have Retro Encounter, which is normally hosted by Mr. Mike Solosi. Uh, the last episode of Retro Encounter was actually hosted by you, Zach. What was it about? Uh, we uh, we chatted about Lunar. Uh, so we have some reviews that have been going up and are going to be coming up uh, it, partially in honor of the 25th anniversary of RPG Fan because, you know, we started as Lunar Net mm-hmm. and also partially in honor of the fact that it's the 30th anniversary of the release of the Silver Star. So uh, four, of, four of us reviewed the four different major versions of Lunar and we got together to chat about uh, the different versions and uh, sort of the things we liked about those different versions and the things we didn't like about those different versions. It was a good time. That's awesome. I mean, it is very exciting because it's kind of the the confluence of the anniversaries. was It was a nice coincidence. Yeah, absolutely. And we also have Rhythm Encounter, which is RPG fans music podcast. Uh, we alternate weeks with uh, Rhythm. We happen to have the two hosts of Rhythm Encounter here. Uh, I believe the last episode was a good old fashioned hoedown, wasn't it? Yep. Don't make me uh, again. Uh, <laughs> it was hoedown showdown and i was so close to calling it ho- oh wait no throwdown showdown yeah. i forgot what i called it now because we we jokingly said that but then it turned out to be an actual hannah montana song so i called it the uh, thing that isn't the hannah montana song anyway mm-hmm. it was farming it was as, a lot of fun it was as i understand it was just a thinly veiled episode of retro encounter talking about stardew valley <laughs> um not only stardew but there was a lot of it there was harvest moon in there too and a little room factory it was a really good episode and some great music. Yeah. Um, do, we, do you want to give a tease of what we have maybe coming up next week? Well, not next week, because next week is mu- next week is uh, going to be the first, uh, but the second of January then. Yeah, I mean, it, anyone who listens to all the shows is actually hearing it here first because we decided to add a new episode into the mix coming up next. So mm-hmm. right now we're calling it Dedications or something like that. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a small little episode, and I'm actually going to let Hillary talk about it because it was her idea. Oh, thank you. Uh- Yeah, I mean, even if it's posting a little bit into the new year, I figured it would be kind of a cute end of year slash New Year's tradition to get songs from the staff and have them offer kind of dedications. And Mike and I would basically DJ and read the dedications. So it should be very, very warm and fuzzy, a very interesting mix of music. Yeah. And a good way to start the new year. My thought is like comparing it to like, you know, an, an old like radio station where people call in and do, do de- dedications. Yeah. Um, except they still do that. So it's not really that old of a concept. Long time listener, first time caller. <laughs> yes, exactly. I believe, I believe one of our blurbs starts with that. <laughs> Does it really? <laughs> okay. Beautiful. I mean, that would be a good name for that. would be a good title of the episode. Oh, dang, actually. Yeah, it would. Okay. Maybe we'll do that. Well, that's, uh, that's rhythm encounter. Um, if you'd like to get in contact with us here at Random Encounter, you can fire us off a message to podcastrpgfan.com. Would absolutely love to hear from you if you have any ideas for future episode themes or we didn't do discussion questions today because we ran really long because it's a big year-end episode. Anything else you'd like to share with us, please fire me off a message there. Uh, if you'd like to send me an email personally, you can do so at jlogan at rpgfan.com. You can also find me on Mastodon at johnlogan at mastodon.social. 
I am not the only person on this podcast with a online presence. Zach, where can we find you online? Uh, you can find me uh, by email, uh, ZachW at RPGFan.com, or you can find me on RPG Fans Discord at ZachW. And Josh? Uh, you can follow me on Threads and Instagram. I'm Watcher Joshua. Cool. And Hillary? Uh, best way to reach me is Hillary a at RPGFan.com. Cool. And Mike? Mike at RPGFan.com. Cool. If you enjoyed this podcast, please share it with your friends. Help us get the word out there. Uh, you can rate us on iTunes or your other podcast player of choice. Uh, yeah, I mean... Honestly, 2024 is on the way. New year. Uh, if you would like to share everything we do with somebody, that would be, honest to God, very useful to us. Uh, we would love that. Um, so uh, I would like to thank everyone for joining us this evening. I would like to thank everyone on this podcast for joining me for this very, very long episode to talk about games that we are super excited about in 2024. Uh, absolutely. Well, yeah. I mean, thanks for having us. This was I haven't been on random in a little while, so it was a lot of fun. Same here. I mean, it's so good to be back and chatting with all of you. And it's an exciting year ahead. So I'm looking forward to it. It is. Hashtag Metroid fi- Prime 4. <laughs> Metroid <laughs> Prime Hashtag 4. Silk Song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag 82. <Silk> <laughs> Hollow Knight 2. The year could go on and on and on. And frankly, so could we. So I better cut this off now. Uh, To everyone out there, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful new year. And whatever you're playing over this holiday season, have fun.